Wow, what an unbelievably cursed stream. Um, OBS just died and just completely shit the bed and reset everything. Okay, hopefully now we're okay. I think, um, yeah, this is, this is a cursed, cursed stream. So I think we just have to accept that that's the way it's going to be, and that's fine. Now, before we get going, we're going to start, we're going to start off with some, some music. Let me see, is there, what do I want to start off as? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I'd like some Meishi Smile. Oh, this is a good song. Okay, we're gonna just test the sound, the music audio real quick. Can you guys hear that okay? Is that too loud? Oh, it's such a good song. A pure show of your queenship, John. Sounds fine to me. Yeah, it's good. Okay, cool, cool. I can hear it. Um. John, does people tell you that you look like Maroon 5 sometimes? Like, I look like five people? That's that's kind of fucked up. Um, there is an audio delay. I wonder, should we just switch the camera? Let me try my other camera. Oh, I hate this camera. I look, like, flat and weird in it, but... How's that, guys? Is that, is that audio delay any better? No delay, puggers. Okay, fuck it. Okay. I don't like how I look in this camera, but I'm going to put aside my vainness for the sake of this fucking stream, okay? Because if we don't get going soon, this will be a disaster. Great. Okay. Um. Okay. Here's how this shit is going to work, okay? On the right here, I have wrote down 100 of my favorite video games of all time. Okay, there is no order to this list on the right. Do not freak out. Azora's Wrath is not the greatest game of all time. Bahamut Lagoon is not the second greatest game of all time. Banjo Kazooie is not the third, and so on and so forth. The list that really matters is here on the left. This is the actual order of everything, right? Jesus, guys, we've already raised so much fucking money. Oh my god. Um. Okay. So, I have divided this list of 100 into 10 special zones, okay? At the start, numbers 100 to 91 are the gates of acceptance. This is pretty cool. If you get into this, you made a good-ass video game. After that, 90 to 81 are the mountains of quality. You made quite a good video game. If you can somehow get past the mountains of quality, you have the Bridge of Killers. This is where we start getting fucking insane. These are some of the best games in existence, but they're not as good as number 70 to 61, The Path of the Elite. Some of the best games ever, which still look like shit compared to 60 to 51, The Doorway of the Best. Only to be diminished by the threshold of brilliance, 50 to 41, which leads to the Stairway of Greatness, leading to the Ascension of the Super Beasts, leading to the Battle on Heavenly Ground, leading to the Domain of God, until finally there is only one left, the Throne of the Undisputed. That's what we're doing here today. But, this isn't everything, okay? Because I couldn't fit all the games I liked onto this list. And so, I had to come up with another list called The Shadow Realm. This is every game I considered being at one of the top 100 games of all time, but couldn't fit them into the 100, okay? So The Shadow Realm, it sounds bad, and it kinda is a bit, but you have to remember, The Shadow Realm is also a place of respect. Good games go into the Shadow Realm. The only way you can make it to the Shadow Realm is if I have enough respect for you for you to go there, okay? But, I have added one more zone. 
and this is somewhere you don't want to go. I'm dead serious. Going here is the worst thing that can happen in a fucking video game, okay? And I want to say to any studios watching this, because I know they're all watching, if your game ends up here, look, it's okay, it's just my opinion, but it is probably the worst thing that will ever happen to you. And that zone is... The DEAD ZONE! This is where I'm going to put any video game suggested by chat that is just, I think, is not a good video game that I do not like. So here it is. If you guys want to suggest games, you can, but keep in mind, your game could end up in the dead zone. Do you want to do that to your favorite? Do you want to do that to your favorite developer? Do you want to do that to your favorite studio? Do you want to have this black mark on their lives for the rest of time? Okay, I'm seeing people to scream at me to put Shenmue 3 in the dead zone. And I don't want- I don't- this is going to be a positive stream. This is going to be a good, fun time, okay? But, I am going to start by entering Shenmue 3 in the dead zone. You see the way you can ne barely read its name? That's in pur that's on purpose because you're not meant to see shit in the dead zone. Nothing really exists in the dead zone. It is a bad place to be. Um, I have not played E.T., so I cannot in good con- Like, again, guys, I have to highlight, this is an awful, terrible thing that can happen, okay? It is so awful to be in the dead zone. I can't put- I can't put any game I haven't played in there. I would never do that to someone. Like, does it even exist anymore? There's no way to tell. Anyway, I don't want to get too negative, but- So that's just- That's the warning for the chat. If you suggest to me something that you think is really good- be prepared for the fact that it could end up in the dead zone, okay? Now, what we gotta do now is go through a hundred game. Okay, here's the Shadow Realm. These are all good games. These are all good games. But the games that did not make it into the top 100 are Let It Die, South Park, Stick of Truth, Joe and Max, Super Double Dragon, Tiny Toons Adventures, which is a great fucking game, by the way, and I won't have anyone say differently. Uh, Little Nightmares, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, Delta Ruin, No More Heroes 2, Muramasa and the Demon Blade, Simon the Sorcerer 2, whoops. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi, which was an ambitious fucking fighting game and no one appreciates it. Choo Choo Rocket, WrestleMania 2000, Busta Move, Sunset Riders, Fury, Evo, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night did not make it into my top 100 despite the fact it's a very good game. If I get too many complaints about this, I will put it in the dead zone. Do not make me do that. Do not make me do that. Into the Breach, Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, Haunting Ground, Arkham Asylum, Fury, Hyrule Warriors, The Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, Wario Land, Thumper, Metal Slug 3, Day of the Tentacle, Goldeneye, Anodyne, uh, Tekken Tag Tournament, River City Girls, Persona 4, which has made it to the top 100, Lilat Wars, Harvest Moon, XCOM Enemy Unknown, Shadow of the Colossus, The King of Fighters 2000, Celeste, Dark Chronicle, SSX Tricky, Silent Hill, Shattered Memories, World of Horror, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Shenmue 1. Whew. Why is Fury there twice? Because it's really good. That's why. That's why it's there twice. I don't want no guff from the chat, okay? Every time I do one of these streams, I get so much fucking guff from the chat. I'm not going to tolerate it this time. Is Silent Hill 3 dead zone? No, Silent Hill 3 fucking rules. That's a beautiful game. I'll put that in the Shadow Realm. Um... Um... Wait, John thinks P4 is better than P5. Lol. Lion Kun, I love you. I appreciate you joining the stream. If you think P5 is better than P4, you're insane, my friend. You are literally insane. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 is dead zone. Final Fantasy 15 can go in the dead zone. That's that's how things work. I'm trying to keep it positive here. I am trying to keep it positive. This is how this shit works, okay? Um, guys, I see a lot of donations coming in. I super appreciate it. We will get to them in due time. I'm going to read out everyone's donations. And I, I really... We're like nearly halfway to our goal. And we have not started the list. Okay. So now, in alphabetical order, I'm going to run down the games that are up for nomination, okay? 
Azora's Wrath, Bahamut Lagoon, Banjo Kazooie, Bayonetta 2, Binding of Isaac, Bloodborne, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, Capcom vs. SNK 2, Cave Story, Chrono Trigger, Command and Conquer Red Alert, Cuphead, Danganronpa 2, Dark Souls, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, Dead Rising, Deadly Premonition, Deadly Premonition 2, I know, I know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, Detention, Devil May Cry 5, Devotion, Disgaea, Doki Doki Literature Club, Donkey Kong Country 2, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Dragon Quest 11, Earthbound, FTL, Fallout New Vegas, Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 6, Seven, Fire Emblem Awakening, Full Throttle, Garrow, Mark of the Wolves, Guitaru Man, God Hand, Gone Home, Guilty Gear, Exerd, Revelator, Gunstar Heroes, Hades, Half-Life, Hollow Knight, Hotline Miami, Hyperlight Drifter, If Found, Killer7, Lisa, Legend Mystical Ninja, Link to the Past, Majority, Majora's Mask, Majority Mask, Mask of Mass Effect 2, Mega Man 2, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metroid Prime, Monster Hunter World, Mother 3, Mystical Ninja 64, Near 999, No More Heroes, Ocarina of Time, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, Phoenix Wright, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Soul Silver, po Portal 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil 4, Persona 4 Golden, Resident Evil Remake, Secret of Mana, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Shenmue 2, Silent Hill 2, to Smash Bros. Switch, Spelunky 2, Street Fighter 3rd Strike, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Streets of Rage 2, Super Mario 3D uh, World, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Bros. Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch Out, Tekken 5, The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead Season 1, Toho 8, Imperishable Night, Tony Hawk's 3, Undertale, Virtue's Last Reward, Beautiful Joe, Fighter, Virtual Fighter 4, Evolution, WWE No Mercy, Wind Waker, Witch's House, Yakuza 0, Yume Nikki, and Zombies A My Neighbors. That's what we're dealing with here, folks. That is the list. Toho, seriously, Spurbus, get the fuck out. You're out of here, buddy. You're gone. Um, Devil May Cry 2 for the win. Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Mania. Um, okay, okay. Only other rules to all this are, if two sequels are similar, they do not get multiple spots. So Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, I picked my favorite among them. I am not going to be debating why I think Metal Gear Solid 2 is better than Metal Gear Solid 3. I have too much other shit to process tonight. I cannot spare the brain power to do that, okay? So I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not going to enter in that debate. You're just gonna have to accept that this is who I am, this is how I feel, and there's nothing that can be done about it, okay? We're just, we, we, like, life is full of difficulty, life is full of hardship, and I want you all to remember that during this stream, because there's going to be a lot of upsetting things that are going to happen. We're all going to be very sad at cuts I have to make, and people are just going to be angry all the time, and that's okay. Uh, so say, DK asks, no Castlevania? My friend, Castlevania is in there, but it's in the Shadow Realm. So no, ca no Castlevania game made it into my top 100. Um, Azura's Wrath is not number one, god damn you people. This this doesn't matter. Okay, this 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 list okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move everyone down a bit because I think I think things are getting confused. So we're gonna move all these guys down here. And this is now what we're gonna look at. It's a fucking great song. Okay, perfect. <sighs> Friends, those are the rules for tonight. That's what we're doing. Mm. Um, just as a reminder, we are raising money for the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. And part of me was a little, maybe thought that maybe that wasn't a great idea because obviously suicide's a really serious thing and I'd never want to make light of that. But I also feel one of the problems surrounding suicide is the stigma of just it not being talked about and it not being discussed. I'm not going to speak personally on any experience I've had with suicide or something like that because I just don't feel like I really have that life experience to me it say so meaningfully but I also wanted to do a stream to try and take some of the stigma out of it and that's why I chose it for this because I think mental health especially in year 2020 became a really fucked up thing for a lot of people and so I figured if we're gonna do something let's do something that's kind of affecting everyone and the American um, Foundation of Suicide Prevention does a lot of really good work. They don't just do like outreach in America, they fund studies, they have like hotlines that you can call, they do a lot of work that like just kind of affects everywhere and so that's why I picked them for the charity. So with that in mind we're going to do the first 10 and then we're going to get to reading some donations. Okay so to begin who is the first game to enter the gates of acceptance? What is the 100th best game of all time? And I was thinking about this earlier. 
And okay, one more note before we begin. I have to say, this could change dramatically depending on what day you ask me this stuff. This is my ultimate list as of right now. If you ask me to redo this list tomorrow, I would say it would end up differently, especially the first 30 or 40, because like it's pretty... I mean, it's pretty difficult to rank like what makes one game better than another. And so I'm just be going, going to be going on instinct and feeling a lot. Okay. And I think the hundredth best game of all time. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with Gone Home. Boom! It has begun. We have begun the transformation. I just double click so we don't lose the colors. Gone Home. Really cool game. Kind of like was one of the first and definitely had a big role in popularizing the real like explore them up kind of. Um, like, I guess walking simulators, a lot of games would call them. I thought it was a really, really well done game. Um, it's beautiful. I think it was like my favorite game I played that year. Looking back on it, when you see the different kind of things that people have done with that genre, I think it's hard to like, it's hard to justify it as like, especially against things like Devotion, which is going to be a real heavy hitter on this list. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's it at number 100. Number 99... Whew. Hmm. This is tricky. Streets of Rage. Fucking loves this song. Which house? Yakuza Zero. Zombies at my neighbors. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Number 99, I'm going to go for Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. This is not Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which would not make it onto my list. Um, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is quite simply just one of the tightest games I have ever played in terms of just pure level design. That game is fucking brilliant because its levels force you to really come to terms with like all the different characters, abilities, mechanics, and all this kind of stuff. And it's people are already so pissed. I love this. Um... To me, like, I don't have, I think, like, an emotional connection with the game that I would need for it to have go higher than this. But just from a pure level design standpoint, I would challenge you to find, like, more tightly designed games than this. Foolish streamer, Misa. Guys, there's going to be a lot of misspelling, and I'm not even going to apologize. That's just what we're doing tonight. Okay, after this... You know what? After this, I think it's actually going to be Red Candle Games Detention. And um, this is the game that came out before Devotion, and it's from a Taiwanese studio, Red Candle Games, and delves a lot into their history and their history in war. I feel like it's the kind of game where if you look at a video on YouTube, you won't appreciate it at all. Okay, we have a suggestion from Mario Odyssey. Is Mario Odyssey one of the 100 best games of all time? I don't think it is. I really don't. And does it belong in the Shadow Realm? Chat, I want to ask you, does chat, does Mario Odyssey, no, I'm getting a lot of no's, more than I expected. Because you see, I don't like Mario Odyssey at all. I don't think it's a very good game, which is why I'm so sorry, but Mario Odyssey is going in the dead zone. <laughs> I don't know how to spell Odyssey. I'm going to misspell it. I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that feels so good. That f and no one can get angry because this is a charity stream and I'm doing a good thing. I can do whatever I want and none of you can be angry at me because I'm raising money for a good cause. Um. Okay, moving on. Okay, Detention, if you have not if you have not played Detention, I really couldn't recommend it enough. It's a beautiful game and it's it's just I I adore it. Okay. 
Number 97, I feel pretty comfortable with God Hand being number 97. This was a game that came out from, I think it was Clover. It was, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Clover. Um, but it was some variant of like the Capcom 6 that came out in, during the GameCube era. Super good game, kind of janky in its own way and just so weird and stupid, but I love it honestly like it's it's a really fun game you create your own combos it has like an excellent like um i think it's kamiya game i'm not 100 percent on that but i think it is but it has like if you like beat-em-ups if you like games where you just get to kick the shit out of people it's an excellent excellent one of them um number 96 where are we going where are we going uh mm -hmm. Prime, Monster Hunter World, Ocarina of Time, Prime Phoenix Wright. No, no, these are all too good. These are all too good for the Gates of Acceptance. Such a switch, but the two. No. No. Okay, back to the top of the list. Back to the top of the It's going to be a lot of this tonight. I'm with Bloom, Banjo Kazooie, Blind of Isaac, Bloodborne. A cave story, Chrono Trigger, Cuphead, Danganron. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm happy enough to drop Deadly Premonition 2 in there. Um, I know earlier I said we weren't doing sequels unless they're drastically different. I love Deadly Premonition 2. It is probably the most problematic game on this list in so many different ways. It is buggy as fuck. It's got kind of shitty representation towards trans people. Um, I'd be lying if I said the game didn't mean a lot to me last year where I just got really really into it and got really lost in that world But yeah, I think 96 feels like the kind of proper place for it because it is just a fucking disaster but um, Over God hand yes bogus forehead over God hands um, Okay, let's let's keep going here. Let's keep going Hmm Tail, Fallout, New Vegas, Full Throttle, Garrow, Mark of the Wolves, Guitar Man, Gunstar Heroes, Hades, <gasps> Hotline Miami, If Found, Seven, Lisa, Legend, Mystical Ninja. Okay, I don't know if I'm cutting Killer7, but hear me out here, okay? Killer7 is a game that I love that I hate playing. I just, it plays like garbage, even though it is like really, really fun. Like, even, even though, like, I respect so much about it, I never want to play it. Bioshock Infinite isn't that good, I don't think. I have not played Bioshock Infinite, so I can't comment on it. I don't think I'd like it. Um, life is strange, I don't... Okay, no, I think, I think on style alone, Killer7 has to go further. Mega Man 2... Let's see. I fucking love this song so much, Jesus Christ. Give me down. 64. This is tough. This is real tough. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I think I can put FTL in there. Um, FTL is a game about flying a spaceship. Um, whoops. Uh, Doki Doki is going to go higher than 95. Oh, we're just a little frozen. Give me a second, guys. Um... No, that's not right. Yeah, FTL. Um, it's a procedurally generated game, so like you never really know what's going to happen, but it's basically up to you to fly through four galaxies, I think, and go from planet to planet. And like a lot of it's just through text, but it's the kind of thing where like the first time I ever played it, um, I got stranded in space with my space dog running out of oxygen until I starved to death, and it was so good. It's, it's a really cool little game. Okay. Um... 
Okay, number 94. Oh, let's just get that back in there. I'm very specific about these colors. Uh, I'd really recommend FTL if you can play it. I think Into the Breach is a better game, but it's, it's really cool. Okay, number 94. Gaia. Final Fantasy VI, Fire and Full Throttle, Garrow Mark the Wolves. No, these are all these are all better than these are all better than this. Online Miami, Hyperlight Drifter, If Found, Legend of Skull Ninja, Links of the Past. What's chat saying? Fire Emblem. Uh, FTL is a roguelike, yeah. So eight person light, Undertale, Via Lore, Beautiful Joe. Oh, this is this is tough already. This is tough already. Okay, I think it's got to be Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, for people who don't know, it's this really, really cool little, um, oh, thank you, Matthew, so much for the $100 donation. That's insane, dude. I will get around to all, like, the donations very shortly. Zombies Ate My Neighbors is, like, a Super Nintendo game. It's super fucking cool. It has a really great style and just, like, it's really fun to play. I think the only reason it stops this early for me is that it's also a nightmare, like it's so difficult and I always got to this like level on it where there were these giant sandworms and it was really scary and I could never beat them so the game balance is in question. Still a great game. Okay, number 93, three spots left in the gate of acceptance. <sighs> okay, let's start from the bottom. I think number 93 feels like a good spot for Undertale, actually. Um, Undertale is like a kind of, it's a good little indie game. And it kind of like, uh, it does some interesting stuff. Like, it's cute. But I think this is about as far as it goes. No. <laughs> no. No, I'm just, I'm just fucking around, guys. No, no, that's not. No, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. Um... I don't know how many people know my takes here on Undertale, but it's going a lot further than that. A lot, lot further. Um, look, I like to trick people. I don't know what to tell you. It's just it's just who I am, okay? Um, Devotion, Disguide, do we literally... Mm. Guilty Gear Third Revelator, Gunstar Heroes, Hades, Miami, If Found, Killer Seven, Lisa, Lights of the Past, Majora's Mask, Mass Effect Two. Oh, this is so tough. Okay, you know what? I think it's got to be Metroid Prime. I really, really like Metroid Prime, but it's not my favorite Metroid game. It's not my favorite first-person shooter. It's not my favorite. I just think it's one of those games. I think I nearly appreciate it more than have like a personal connection with it. And so I think it's kind of got to go here. It's, it's like a fucking cool game and I could see it being way higher on a lot of people's lists. But for me, this is about as far as it goes. Oh, this is a really good song. It's about a robot coming to life. Oh, no. Man, this Sheets is bugging out. I might have to restart it in a little bit, but... Metroid Prime at number 93, moving on into 92. Two spots left in the gate of acceptance. 
And I think number 92 for me is actually going to be If Found. Um, I really, really liked If Found. This is an Irish visual novel that came out last year. Um, I was very, very high on it when I finished it. It was actually like, in Let's Fight a Boss, it was actually my game of the year last year. I think the further I moved away from it, the more I kind of appreciate its story, but also kind of find myself maybe wishing that there was more of a game element to it because like the narrative was so linear and I think if it had mixed the story with maybe more of the strengths of being a video game, it could go a lot further, but it's a really cool game. It's a really great LGBTQ game. Like if you, you know, if like, I think that stuff has kind of led to isolation. So for you, and I think it gets across a lot of that stuff in a really profound, meaningful way. And it's, it's really fucking cool. But I think this is as far as it goes. Um, later on, I'm going to be pulling up like footage of games and we're going to be talking about specific moments. But for now, I don't want to get too bogged down in that because we'll, we will literally be here all night. And like, it's already like, it's already like 20 past 10 or 10, 20 PM as you Americans call it. So, if found. Okay, this next one's gonna be controversial, but just allow me to explain myself, okay? The next cut is going to be Fallout New Vegas. Um, this is a game I started playing very, very recently, okay? And I have not played, I've played about 12 hours in New Vegas and I've been having a great time. I've been having a really, really good time with it. I know, I know everyone's going insane, I know. There is every chance that if I got to play like 20 more hours of Fallout New Vegas, it could go so much further up the list because I think it's a fantastic game, okay? Like I really do. But in all honesty, when I think of my emotional, can I'm so sorry chat, everyone is like, everyone is going nuts. Um, if I think about like my emotional connection with this game, what it means to me, it is like less than a lot of games on this list, but that is because I need to play more of it. And so it's unfortunate for New Vegas, if I did this list in a week or two weeks or three weeks, it could go so much further than that, okay? So I'm sorry everyone, I'm sorry, this is as far as Fallout. No I think it's a great game, I, I, I'm gonna play some like tomorrow when I'm done with this stream. But that's as far as it goes. Okay. Guys, we are at the end of the Gates of Acceptance. The first tenth of our journey is over. We have now reached the Mountains of Quality. This is where shit starts to get serious. I know I've tried to like, I know I've tried to say that things are serious before. They weren't. Now we're serious. But before we do, I want to read out some donations real quick. So... Okay, so we have already raised $1,274. That is absolutely fucking insane. Um, I kind of thought we might hit the $1,500 like, by the end of the stream, but that is... That is an awful, awful lot. So, um, okay, I'm going to read out some messages here. Okay, um, Donald Dohan, Donald Donahue the third donated twenty dollars. Proud to be a member of the Wolf Pack. Um, Anonymous donated ten dollars. My family has suffered from more than one suicide. I'm grateful that you are doing a stream for its prevention. More importantly, there will be chat as talking about its mental illness is not uh, illness that preceded. It will normalize it as a social prevalence, seeking help for the people who are suffering. Thank you, dude. That is kind of like. A point of this like that is kind of what I wanted to do and so thank you I see you donated twice so thank you so much and um, anonymous $20 uh, para paprika papa oh dude thanks so much thanks so much Nikki. and um, glad to see you doing the charity stream nameless queen <laughs> thank you thank you and um, ASMR comics $20 thank you so much just to watch $10 and um, if revengeance isn't top 30 we riot yeah it's too, too right um, Ribbit House, ten dollars. You're going to have or to remake this list again when Final Fantasy VII Remake two, two, three, four, five, seven. Final Fantasy VII Remake is not in this list. It is in the Shadow Realm. Um, Owen, hey John, much love from Drimna. Um, let's make sure Undertale. Let's make some Undertale numbers. Um, Fluffy D Delphin. Uh, blessed be the nameless one. By the way, if you're unfamiliar, I am the nameless one. That's that's what I do on my podcast. I've recently reigned supreme over my podcast. It's very exciting. 
Um, Crash Camo, fifty dollars. That's so generous. Thank you, dude. Thank you for raising money for a great cause. It means a lot to me. You're very kind and generous for putting this together. All I am doing is just reading out the names of video games. Like this is super. This is a real easy way for me to do anything. So I don't think I deserve too much credit on it. Like. Generally, I think the people who donate are kind of what make it important. Um, Mina Sofita, $10. Koznagi, um, Kozanagi, $50. Hey, John, won't be able to watch most of the stream, but I'm sure it'll be fun. Watch uh, 98 games lost, lot loose Shenmue 1 and 2. Just Shenmue 2. Just Shenmue 2. Shenmue 1 is in the Shadow Realm. Alt, $20. I won't be able to drop by tonight, but I hope you have a great time. May the egg prevail. Um, Anonymous, $10. Anonymous, $15. Um, Treneth, $20. and um, love what you do. You've provided me with so much entertainment, media. Check check out and listen to the Let's Fight a Boss podcast. It's so much fun. I'm super grateful. Thank you. This is a great cause, and I hope you reach the goal. Thank you, dude. It's looking it's it's looking likely. Um, Birdie, $20. Um, uh, why don't you have a fitted shirt on your bed? You good? I, I, I don't, I guess, I guess I should have that. Mikan, $50. T thank you so much, Mikan. That's crazy. TK Swag, $100. Holy shit. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this wonderful charity. I hope some of the legacy of Kane games are on your list. Their story is magnificent. I am also hoping um, for a Why Would You Play. You know what? The Soul Reaver game. Soul Reaver is a cool ass game. Soul Reaver. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to put that in the Shadow Realm. Um, Mog ten dollars, and if the babe is born a boy, he's given, he's given to a woman old who nails him down upon a rock, captures him, and streaks the gold. Uh, thank you, dude. Uh, Mr. Spaceline, a hundred dollars. Holy shit! Thank you so much, dude. Um, thanks for the stream, John. Min Lee, twenty five dollars. All hail, <laughs> all hail he of no name. Not long may he reign. Um, big fan of your work. Let me try and adjust this a little bit. A big fan of your work. I very much appreciate charity streams like this. They never fail to fill me with hope for my fellow humans. Also, I don't um, I don't know what all this nameless one talk is about, but I hope it's about Planescape Torment. Fingers crossed. Have a great stream. I'll explain nameless one properly at some point. Thank you so much, Relinus. Raiden Breaker, $20. List of the nameless. Um, nameless Panda, Child of Light. Um, as a day one member of the Nameless Church, I am proud of our glorious queen. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Um, Gammon Post, $20. Ren S, $10. You are doing something amazing. Unfortunately, it's 11 p.m. here, but but I will stay. Yeah, it's it's coming up to 11 p.m. here, too. Cheeky Chimera, $10. As someone who escaped a mental health abyss in 2019, the cause means a lot to me. Love your videos and love that you really care for those who struggle. Keep it up, both you and everyone pushing through the dark depths of the human psyche. That's really cool to hear, Cheeky Chimera. Thank you so much. And yeah, like, you know... I think it's fair to say everyone goes through shit. Obviously, I think some people, like, they have much deeper, harder struggles than others. And, like, if me doing a shitty video game list helps with that even a little bit, you know, I'll know that, like, what I do is not a waste. Uh, SamUL, $20. Can only make it a bit for the stream, but watch, want to chip in. Great cause. Keep the good work done. Thank you so much. Um, Lord Killjoy, $10. Gaelic Games Football for the PS2 in the Dead Zone. <laughs> I think I have played that game. I have played that game. I will happily put Gaelic games to Gaelic games for the PS2 in the dead zone. Done. Let me just correct that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh my god, I was not expecting to think of Gaelic games today. A friend tried to make me play it and I hated it just as much as I hate actual Irish sports. Um Kyle Wallman, $5. Thanks for the great work, Josh. No problem, dude. Puppet, $10. Godspeed, Joho. McKirby, $5. Jam, don't you dare read this donation. Oh, it's too late. Um, Thok, $50. Thank you so much. 50 bucks. Thank you so much, Thok. That's incredibly generous. Aaron Smith, $10. Hey, John. Love your work, and I'm glad the podcast is back. I have nothing interesting to say. I just hope you're having a good day, and I'm looking forward to the future Wrestle Talks. Um, thank you, dude. Um, Sneels underscore MA, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, $15, Josh Leic, $10, Liam Q, $20, Mech, $20, love your videos and let's fight a boss, even though I like God of War, Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, I hope Chron Chrono Trigger goes far, hey, me too, Sean H, $10, uh, Lilac Wars in the top 100, 
that deal not in the top 100 that deals psychic damage to me john anyways great stream great streamer and great cause thank you so much dude i like lilac wars a lot but yeah i gotta gotta be real here uh fey lord Kyrie, 20 dollars um thank you so much garmonious 20 dollars um big fan keep up the good work thank you dude rice master uh new vegas at least top 20 please oh no oh i'm so sorry rice master um okay you know what guys i'm gonna stop reading donations there i will pick it up at this point in future because we got a, we got a lot of stuff left to go and i'll be back in two seconds i'm just gonna grab a drink real quick Oh, okay, we're back. Let me see here. I bought like a bunch of Cokes, so, because I'm going to need the caffeine to be able to do this, because we have a long way to go. Um, so... Okay, so... We are now at Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Not my not not a game I'm super fond of. It's not it's def it's to me it's not Shadow Realm material, but it's not Dead Zone material either, because I appreciate that it's a fucking cool game, but it's not Yeah, no, it, that's that's not going anywhere. Um Death Stranding, mm, same deal. It's not going to be in the Shadow Realm, but it's not bad enough to go in the Dead Zone. Journey, have not played Journey. The Last of Us, mm, no, no. Danganronpa, Danganronpa is in, Danganronpa 2 is in the top 100. I have not played Cyberpunk, Mother 3 is in there. Persona 5 Persona 4 is a better game than Persona 5 in my opinion. I don't think I don't think I find it very difficult to argue that Katamari I'm actually not a big fan of Katamari Life is Strange is a tough one because I don't like Life is Strange, but I can appreciate it from afar and like it came out in a time where there were very few gay games and so I, I wouldn't feel right dead zoning it. And like it's just, Life is Strange is like personally repellent to me, but I get that people like it for reasons that I think are good, but yeah. Okay, we're gonna go back to this. Through the Gates of Acceptance, onto the mountains of quality here we go guys we are so close to hitting our goal and that is fucking insane we hit this so much quicker than i thought we would what is with this okay Okay, I think I might be about to do something that's very unpopular. Oh, this is going to be bad. The first entry into the Mountains of Quality... is Hades. <laughs> oh 
Oh, 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 chat. Oh, chat. I'm so sorry. Holy shit. Wow. Look at you guys. <laughs> Retire this man. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing with Hades. I think Hades is a fantastic game. In fact, there are 10 games that I consider the 100 best games of all time that Hades is better than. That's insane. But I hit a point with Hades and it was just like, it felt like chewing gum that I had chewed. I just felt like I'd seen everything in Hades. I felt like I'd gotten all the good weapon combinations. And doing a run in Hades now doesn't thrill me in the same way that doing a Binding of Isaac run does or even a Spelunky run. So I guess what I'm saying is I think Hades is amazing, but I think there's like, for me, there was like a very clear point where I was like, I just kind of had to get rid of it. I think it's a fucking fantastic game, but I think for me, this is as far as it goes. It's done well. It's done well. Okay. 89. Okay, it's got to be Mystical Ninja 64. Um, I really love the Ganbare Goemon um, series. It's like one of my favorite video game series ever. And this is the S Nintendo 64 game of that. And it's basically a... It's kind of like a Super Mario 64 clone. And it's just... It's actually, I want to pull up a video of this real quick because it is really fucking beautiful. Um, like, when I say beautiful, I mean beautiful in like a low poly kind of garbagey way. Like, look at this. Look at look at this adorable ass game. Like, doesn't doesn't this just make you feel good? Doesn't this just make you wish for a simpler time when the world was not so complicated, when all your allies had not turned against you and life wasn't a screaming nightmare? Because that's what it does for me. Look, just beautiful, beautiful. Better than Hades. Better than Hades, motherfuckers. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Mm. Paper Marathon's... Mm -mm. Portal 2. Nah. Hmm. Street Fighter of 3, Streets of Rage 2, some rare 3D world. Hell no. Bloodborne cave story, come on, conquer. Okay, dead or alive to ultimate. Okay. Okay, look, everyone here knows how I started on YouTube, and that is that I started an anime YouTube channel, and Therefore, it shouldn't be any surprise that when I was a teenager, the game Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate meant a lot to me. I am not going into what I mean by that anymore. You, you just, you figure it out for yourself, okay? And I had a lot of fun games of this against my cousin. One time me and him sat down and I swear to God, we played... I think we played 120 matches in a row and it was fucking brilliant. It was one of the best, like, it was one of the best experiences with a fighting game I've ever had. Um, and I will never not be able to think of, like, getting a PS2 for the first time and playing Dead or Alive 2 and just, like, it being so far ahead of anything that could have existed on the PS1 or N64. And, yeah, that's my justification for it. I like it. Okay, moving on. Um, Dead or Alive Ultimate 2, better game than Hades. 
fucking deal with it, everyone. Just look, in like, in a year, you'll all have come down from your weird, horny Hades high, and you'll all be like, you know what? Mystical Ninja 64 and Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate are better than Hades, okay? <laughs> People are still so annoyed. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> like, everyone is so mad, but there is the odd person in the chat being like, thank you for doing this. Thank you for ruining everyone. And hey, Dead or Alive's a great fighting game. I won't I won't hear any shit talked about Dead or Alive 2. It's a legit good fighting game. Um Okay, let's keep this moving. God, Persona 4 Golden has actually made it way further than I thought it would, but I wouldn't feel right cutting it yet, so I'm not gonna... So, A, Undertale, Beautiful Joe, Moon Waker, Witch's House, nah, nah, nah. Bottom of that list strong. Nothing, nothing going there yet. Um, Azura's Wrath, Bahamut Lagoon, Banjo Kazooie. <sighs> okay, it's Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. Um, I know there's going to be like one person freaking out about this game getting cut. It's my favorite real time strategy game of all time. I think it's fantastic. Way better than Hades. You know, I'm starting to think I maybe placed Hades too high up this list. I'm wondering, should I. Should I drop Hades down some more? Like, is Hades really better than Fallout? No, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. Um, Command & Conquer, it was really good too. One of the things I really love about the game is it had these old uh, FMVs. <laughs> People are so mad. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so basically, this these this is what the cutscenes of Command and Conquer look like. <laughs> and I swear to God, when this game came out, this was the most incredible shit. This was amazing looking. Just beautiful. Look at that. Amazing. Okay. Um, have we hit our donation goal? Holy shit. Guys, we have smashed our donation goal we we jesus christ we are we are 84 dollars over our donation goal that was so fast oh my god um well i guess i don't have to do this anymore so thanks for that uh, i was getting kind of tired of it honestly so there you go uh the top 100 the top uh 13 games out of 100 uh thanks everyone for but you know we'll, we'll keep going we'll keep going but that's that's really incredible guys i know i know i'm kind of playing the heel here as i am reticent to do sometimes but that is you know it's a really good cause and it's so fucking weird to me that like we hit it and we're not even like a fifth of the way into this stream so yeah let's keep raising some money like let's let's raise some fucking hell here and really make a difference but you know thank you everyone who's donated and just thank you everyone who's watching like i'm having a good time and really hope you guys are too but hey hades is a shitty game <laughs> oh <laughs> you're such an asshole i know 
I'm aware. Like, people think I'm nice because they watch my videos and they think I'm nice, but like, when I can edit myself, I'm a fucking dickhead and I know it. Like, I have a lot of really nice friends and they're all like, you know, you're kind of a nightmare. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Like, you can listen to the podcast for more of that. Oh shit, this, this, this breakdown is so fucking good. So good. Oh my god. Okay, number 86. We're gonna do more donation readings at the end of this. Um, I wish I could cut Hades again. It just felt so good the first time, you know? Um... No, I will not. I, I can't. I'm not gonna send Hades to the Shadow Realm. It doesn't. It doesn't deserve that. It's a fantastic game. I'm just. I'm just. I just like healing it up. Whew. Disgaea. Earthbound. Full throttle. Okay, I think next is going to be Full Throttle. This is a really old LucasArts point-and-click adventure that I adore. It actually got a HD remaster, which I have not played. Um, I was obsessed with this game when I was little. I just thought it was the coolest fucking thing. I'd like to believe it holds up well, but um, a lot of the games from that era do, so I'm hoping it does, and yeah. Full Throttle. Number 85. Let's keep it moving. Never, never played a Monkey Island game's completion. Mud clip. I got stuck at the guys where you need to fight guys on the bike. So you need to throw sand in the woman in the ch with the chainsaw's face. I got stuck on that for a long time. And never played Grim Fandango. Never played Monkey Islands. Oh. Tofu Boy 44 is after suggesting Crash Bandicoot. Is Crash Bandicoot one of the hundred greatest games of all time? So we're talking about Crash Bandicoot for the PS1. Is Crash Bandicoot one of the greatest games of all time? Guys, I don't think it is, which means we have to go down to the Shadow Realm. Does Crash Bandicoot belong in the Shadow Realm? Does Crash Randicoot belong at the bottom of the Shadow Realm, or does it deserve to go even lower? Oh, you, people don't think I'll do it? People don't think I'll do- people don't think I don't have the fortitude to put Crash Bandicoot in the dead zone? Well, get a load of this! Crash Bandicoot is in the dead zone! <laughs> <laughs> no one can stop me. I can do whatever I want. I am God in this reality and everyone just has to accept it. That's it. The dead zone. Crash Bandicoot. Guys, that's what happens when you come into this without thinking. When you suggest a game, you need to think carefully because look what can happen. Can you imagine Naughty Dog at the moment. Can you imagine? I bet Naughty Dog is getting like I know it's like it's it's early on a Saturday, but I bet Naughty Dog just got an email that their first ever game just got dead zone and they can't believe it. They're probably shutting their doors. Like I would not expect I would not expect uh Last of Us 3 because that is a blow so devastating they will never make it. Okay. Now let's go. Oh, got a message. Sorry. Okay, let's keep it moving. Number 85. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. 
Killer7 still needs eliminating. That's a good point. That's a good point, buddy. Hmm. Is there a Quantic Dream game on this list? There is not. There is not. I have very complicated feelings towards the Quantic Dream games, and they are definitely not a hundred of the best games ever made, but they're not good enough for the Shadow Realm. I genuinely don't think they belong in the Dead Zone, and it's for one reason, they are ambitious as fuck, okay? Like, they're not great games. David Cage seems like a moron. He, his stories are bad, and he's a bad writer, but I respect the ambition of those games. Um, why is Hades so low? Um, because it's not as good as anything that's above it, I would say, is the reason for that. Um, any love for Sekenku Detsu 3? It's good. I don't like it as much as uh, Secret of Mana. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, this is getting tough. This is getting tough. Gonna have to make some difficult calls here. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Gonna have to start getting brutal. <sighs> okay, next cut is going to be Guilty Gear Exerd Revelator. I love Guilty Gear. I love the Guilty Gear universe. I love its characters. I love everything about it. If I ever said that I had like made, if that if, if I at any point said that like I could play any Guilty Gear game with a degree of competence, I would be lying. I am bad at those games and I have never fully understood their mechanics and I want to, but it is a barrier that I feel is like so high. And so for that reason, I got to cut Guilty Gear Exerted Revelator just because like, again, it's my personal connection to this game. I love it. Biken is one of the all-time best fighting game characters ever. I love her so much. But I think considering that things are getting a little tight here, it's got to go. Um. Okay. Next up, I know this is going to piss people off as well, but the next cut is going to be Hollow Knight. Um, I love Hollow Knight. I think it is a game that so far surpassed my expectations. Like, I really went into it expecting nothing and just loved it. The art style, the combat, the gameplay, it's all great. I have not beaten it and I don't like being lost. I know, I know, everyone loves Hollow Knight. I know, I know. But I, I've got to be honest, it's like, it's a cool game. It is not what I consider one of the best 75 or 85 games in the world. And we've got, look guys, I'm sorry, but we gotta get cutting. I can cut Hades again if that would make people feel any better. Number 84, Hollow Knight. And that is a, that is a position to be proud of. That is, that is really good. And I, I cannot wait. And I need to go back and beat Hollow Knight and there's every chance that could go up, but that's as far as it goes. Okay, let's keep it moving here. Okay, you know what? I wasn't going to cut Monster Hunter World for a while. And then I remembered the fucking egg missions. Monster Hunter and Mon Monster Hunter World is the game that made me give a shit about Monster Hunter. It is an amazing game. Its quality of life improvements actually brought me to the point that I can finally, after three attempts on three different games, appreciate Monster Hunter. It's beautiful. It's great. I hate collecting eggs. I hate looking for tracks. I hate that so much of the game is barricaded behind, like, having to search out these tracks when I just want to kill giant monsters with my friends, okay? But it's gotta go. It's gotta go. I 
Uh, do you know, I gotta say, I wouldn't, like, I, I, see, I saw one person saying that, like, Monster Hunter is Diet Dark Souls. I, I really think there's such different experiences, but, um, I, I do like it a lot, but yeah, I think it's gotta go. Hang on, this is bugging out. This page is frozen. Awful takes in chat. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, hell yeah, what a song. Two, two parts. There are two games on this list that will not make it out of the mountains of quality. And I think one of them is Super Mario Bros. World... Super Mario World 2... Yoshi's Islands. Um, really great game. I went back to it last year and actually felt like it didn't hold up as well as I thought it would. But beautiful art style, really interesting game. Like it a lot, but it's like my maybe fourth or fifth favorite Mario game. <laughs> Bogus forehead. That's the best one. He's mad, lads. Over 3D World. 3D World is maybe... 3D World is maybe the best 3D Mario game. Just just marinate on that one for a little bit. I, I don't fucking care. I'll say anything. No Galaxy. Um, you know what? I, I'm not actually a big fan of Galaxy. I'm not going to put it in the dead zone or anything, but I don't, don't even like it enough to put it in the Shadow Realm. Uh, I just... I don't think that's a great game. I think it's okay. It's fine. Okay, one more game. Oh, part of me is saying VLR, Virtue's Last Reward, but I do fucking love that game. Oh, okay. Let's let's see if we can find something that can replace Virtue's Last Reward for the 81 spot. Um, Little Goon, Banjo Kazooie, Winding of Isaac. For... Mm. This is tough. This is fucking tough. Uh, people are saying, does Virtues, does VLOR really go before 999? That is a difficult, because to me, 999 is a more complete experience. I think 999 does what it does better than Virtues Last Reward. Virtues Last Reward is also a way more ambitious game than 999. That's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, guys, I, I think it's got to be one of those two. <sighs> you know what? I think it is actually going to be 999. I think 999 goes at this point. Nine nine nine, one of my favorite visual novels ever. Absolutely adore it. 
beautiful game, twitches off some really interesting concepts. I think the only thing that lets it down for me is I don't think the character writing is that interesting. I think it's a bunch of very average characters put in a really interesting situation, and I think VLR edges it out a little there. I think there's better characters in VLR, but um, I also think 999 has one of the strongest atmospheres of any game I've ever played, and a lot of that's down to the music. The soundtrack fucking rules, and I love that. Yeah, I think that's what it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. Okay, guys, we have made our way past the gates of acceptance through the mountains of qualities, and we have released, we have reached the Bridge of Killers. This is a huge, huge achievement for every game that's made it this far. But before we continue our journey, we have to keep going through some donations. And we are lucky enough to have absolutely obliterated our donation goal. Uh, I should have set higher goals but i did not but i'm gonna keep going with the readouts here so um uh, uh, okay i think we were on rickmeister and um, new vegas at least top 20 yeah that was where we left it adam 25 dollars uh, joey 10 dollars as a person who suffers with mental health i appreciate this enormously sorry for the small amount um uh, Months have been rough, but I keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much, Joey. And yeah, I hope I hope things get a little easier for you, dude. I think um, last year, which you know, the quarantine and everything, it's just a nightmare on everyone's mental health. I think everyone is like suffering with this shit. And that's kind of why I wanted to, you know, do something mental health related. And I, I hope this helps even a little bit. And $10 is a lot, dude. Like, thank you for that. Like, it, it's really fucking cool. Um. Insipid Ace, $100. Holy shit, that is incredible. Thank you. This is not a joke. $15. Love the cause. Love the channel. Thanks, dude. Um, that Lad Who Wears, $2. Thank you so much. Another Sam, $20. Sand Noodle, $20. Keep the, keep the, <laughs> keep the takes hot at the dead zone cold in the ground. Um, Matthew Kowalski, $100. Also happy to know it for a good cause. Also, big love you, bro. Thank you so much. Um, Pol Polesian Fire, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, I accidentally donated directly and not through the st stream, so here's another smaller one. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry that happened, dude. Thank you so much. Um, if if you donated directly to me and you want me to PayPal that back to you or something, um, get in touch. Uh, you can find uh, my email on my Twitter because I wouldn't want money that wasn't meant for me. Um, ideal Ethereal, $20. Uh, keep up the great work, iPad 12. God Usopp, $5. Um, what's good, artsy? What's a good artsy movie? A good artsy movie. Uh, Angel's Egg. Go watch Angel's Egg. That, that fucking rules. You won't know what happens in it, but it doesn't mean it's not an amazing movie. Whoops. Uh, there was a ton of reshuffling there. Let me just... Sorry, I lost my place. Uh, 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 boxes, $10. Gorn, Gormag, $10. Uh, DK, $10. Lee Matthew Russo. Oh, DK uh, wrote, um, giving what I can for a good cause. Lee Matthew Russo. Um, super cool to see you doing this. Super Apache Wolf. Um, long live the Nameless Queen. Surprised that you'd pick Danganronpa 2 over V3. We can get to that. Carelessly, $10. Uh, love your videos, love your streams, and love the cause. Thanks for doing this. Would love to know your opinion on Final Fantasy 9. Uh, great game. Really great game. And um, the only reason it's not in this list is because I think it's just similar enough to Final Fantasy 7 where I don't feel the need to conclude 7, 8, and 9. Um, but yeah. Uh, Rami. End of Ava is the greatest movie ever and I made and I love you and I actually agree with that. That is my favorite movie of all time. Evangelion. I have End of Evangelion. I've watched it exactly twice because I only want to watch it once like every 10 years because I just love it so much and I never want it to become routine. I never want to I never want to be able to say the lines with the characters. I always want some mystery around that. Uh, Mikan, $20. 
Um, I probably should have done this for the first time, but it never hurts to donate again, and for such a great cause, and this keeps me from spamming chat. What are your thoughts on Clock Terror 3? I completely understand if it goes into the dead zone. Much love. Mikan, first of all, let me commend your brave braveness for understanding the implications of what you have just done, and potentially sending Clock Terror 3 to the dead zone. Fortunately for you, that cannot happen because I have never played it. I actually own a PlayStation 2 copy, copy that is just out there, and at some point I will because I hear it's cool, but I have not played it, so I can't say. Um, Nick Dis Disrosiers, I'm so sorry I butchered your name, but $10, thank you. Um, Krega Monster, Monster, $20. Um, aggressive inline for the Xbox. For the Shadow Realm, please. Never played it. Can't do it, but thank you for the donation. John Walker, $10. I haven't watched the podcast yet, but thanks for the spoilers. Dude, It's it's been a week. I mean, what can I... Well, you you gotta be up on that, you know? Um, Uncle Grant, but trust me, if you listen to that podcast, there will be some surprises for you. Um, Uncle Grandpa, um, hope you're having a good one. Please don't put Yakuza 7 in the dead zone. Oh... Would I be crazy enough to put Yakuza 7? Would anyone put Yakuza 7 in the dead zone? Because, like, I think Yakuza 7, it's not a bad game, you know? It's not, like... I mean... It is, in some ways, demonstrably worse than the other Yakuza games. And some, ha some, some would argue that it has started off a terrible precedent for the series. Some would say that maybe people are willing to look past all the bad things about Yakuza 7 because they're so in love with the concept of Yakuza. But maybe Yakuza died at judgment. Maybe there hasn't been a good Yakuza game. I'm not saying I think these things. But about, I am saying, like, do you guys think that Yakuza 7 should go in the Shadow Realm? Do you think we should put Yakuza 7 in the Shadow Realm? I'm curious, do, should Yakuza 7 go in the Shadow Realm? Hmm, interesting, a lot of yeses. Boy, people sure would be upset if I put it in the dead zone, wouldn't they? That would really sour the mood of this stream. So I'm gonna say, I think Yakuza 7 is an okay Yakuza game. And I think it's a fucking terrible RPG in the dead zone it goes! <laughs> Oh, that felt so good. That felt so good. John, you have bad taste. Maybe. But it's my stream, and you're all watching. You are objectively wrong. Holy shit. Fuck you. Ch fuck your fucking char- Fuck you, you charitable motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, no one can get mad. This is all for a good cause. This is all for a good cause, you know? I mean... <laughs> now lean back in your chair and shout re like the monster you are. Oh, thanks for the read. Thanks for the raid, Breener. I hope you had a good time with Undertale tonight. Sorry I wasn't able to be there. I was doing this fucking thing. Um, Yeah, just just telling all these, all, all these knuckleheads how, like, um... <laughs> That's my cousin Brian who just raided me. He's a good dude. He's actually playing through Undertale right now. Um, I was just explaining to everyone how Yakuza 7 isn't a good or game at all. Like, it's kind of shitty, but it's fine. Uh, anyway, let's get back to reading some donations. Bad taste for a good cause. <laughs> um... Oh, I actually missed one from John Walker. Um, 
You know what? We're gonna we're actually gonna come back to John Walker's question in a little bit because I think that's gonna I think I've already poured enough salt on chat for the moment and I need to we need to we need to keep things posy. This is a positive evening, everybody. So getting back on track, number 80, the bridge of killers. We have 70 80 games to oh my god, we have 80 fucking games to go. Oh, <laughs> Oh, this is such a bad idea, but um, just to say guys our total um, Our total our total donation. We have raised $1,700 right now. Uh, our goal was 1500 so Wow, that is that is so fucking cool um, But yeah Mm, number 80. It's weird, like, when you read through the list, it's like you read it and you're like, every round, it's like, no, no, no. And sometimes it's something feels really solid. And then, like, you can't imagine cutting it. And then as things get more desperate, slowly you feel yourself softening on things and being like, I think we can start to let that go. And it's weird. And I think I know what's going to go next. Okay. I know what's going next. The first entry into the Bridge of Killers is Fire Emblem Awakening. Um, absolutely fantastic game. Love Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, Tharja and Long Ku, two of my favorite video game characters. Absolutely fucking brilliant. But I have one major problem with this game. I think this is a game with great characters with a really meh story. I think the story has a really interesting plot twist and if you've played it you know what it is but I do think that like it's not it's not the full package and I like the game I like the gameplay in it. I think the gameplay is way better than something like um Three Houses which I think has really meh gameplay but yeah that would be my justification for this. Number 79 we're getting into it now. Oh fuck okay this sort this song is called Mapper and it's um this was the song I used in my Dragon Ball Z video about like when I'm talking about Vegeta and when I basically give his whole backstory and I can now never not think of Vegeta when I hear this moment and it's like it's like I really it means a lot to me and it's just it's such a fucking great song and we're just going to enjoy it together as we go through this, but yeah, pay attention to the song. It's called Mapper and it's by Infinity Shred. <sighs> VLR is next, I think. Um, I feel like we kind of already talked a lot about VLR and it's a great game, but I think it can't really go much further than this. Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass in a lot of ways. It's a very awkward game, but it's still incredibly worth it. And like, I think the way it explains things like string theory and all these like really out there concepts is fucking amazing and i also think the cast is generally a lot stronger than 999 and um, i love the voice acting as well the voice acting of the weird bunny rabbit is so so good it's like one of the best like villain voice acting i've ever heard and um, pokemon sword and shield in the dead zone mm, no i wouldn't put sword and shield in the dead zone i think those are good pokemon games uh firewatch isn't bad enough to go in the dead zone Okay, let's keep it moving here. Oh, that fucking breakdown of that song is like one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. 
I think deadly deadly premonition goes here, and cool like, you know. It's a broken game with a lot of personality. Also has some really weird treatments of like trans a kind of trans character and I don't like that about it. But it is so fucking weird and broken and kind of beautiful in its own way. Uh, there's a really good video essay on it. Um, it's called Deadly Premonition more than just so bad it's good. I can't remember the name of the person who made it, but it's really worth a watch because it shows you how strangely mechanically intricate the game actually is, and I'd recommend that. Um, Half-Life... Does Half-Life encapsulate the whole series or just the original game? Just the original game. We'll get to that. Um... So, oh, earlier on I had some people asking me to explain what's going on here. So, this, these are all the rankings. Right now we're at number 77 and we have a bunch of different zones that grow in importance the higher we go until finally the top 10 is the Domain of God and number 1 is Throne of the Undisputed. Below that, games that don't get into the top 10 are in the Shadow Realm. The Shadow Realm is a place of honor. It's a place of dignity. That's a good place to be. But below the Shadow Realm, we have the dead zone, and these are for games I do not like. So, so far in the dead zone, we have Shenmue 3, Final Fantasy 15, Mario Odyssey, Gaelic Games PS2, Crash Bandicoot, and Yakuza 0. I dislike those games, and they are in the dead zone. <laughs> the dead zone is a very controversial place. <laughs> No, not yet. Did I say Yakuza 0? Yakuza 7. Yakuza 0 is fucking going places. Um, I meant 7. Yakuza 0 is right here, my friends. See, like, it, it's right here. Yakuza 0 is very safe. It is so far away from the dead zone. It's just, it's, it's crazy, okay? Um... Okay, let's keep it moving. So number 77. Hmm. Okay, Killer 7. Killer 7 for sure. Um, really interesting game with a ton of flaws. Uh, it has maybe more style than nearly every other game on this list. I have no idea what is going on in that story, but I can appreciate there's something kind of fucking beautiful about it. But I think um, it's not my favorite Suda51 game, but it's, it's, it's my second favorite Suda51 game. It's cool. This is as far as it goes. At 77. Hell yeah. Uh, near no more heroes. Over time, Phoenix right. Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Silver, Portal Two, Shimmer Two. No, no, no. Mm, Super. Mm. Hmm. Okay, I'm sure this is going to be an unpopular one. Number 76 is going to be Cave Story. Oh, that did twice. Cave Story, Cave Story. I, I love Cave Story. I really, really love Cave Story. Um, I think I... When I was headed to a con last year, I replayed most of Cave Story on my Switch on a plane, and it was still really good, but I think when I originally played Cave Story, it was like the idea that this was made by just one person was so fucking mind-blowing, and I think it's lost some of that 
now that indie games are such a big thing and indie games are so big in part because of that game and it's great if you haven't played it you should check it out it's like a piece of game in history and it's got some of the fucking cutest pixel art you'll ever see but yeah i think this is as far as it goes oh <sighs> Okay, I think the next one for me is Hotline Miami. Um, I feel like Hotline Miami in a lot of ways kind of brought like style in games to nearly a new level. Like it's not the visuals, it's not the soundtrack, it's not the writing, it's how all those things coalesce into one just amazing fucking package that I really loved. Um, it's an incredible game. Like, playing it is really fun, but, like, I don't think you can even watch a Let's Play of Hotline Miami and get what's so good about it. Like, you have to be in it, experiencing every part of it at once, and I think it's a really cool version of that. Uh, Cheeky Chimera, Hotline Miami was a musical awakening for me. Me too, buddy. Big time. Although, do you know, the only thing I think is better about Hotline Miami 2 than Hotline Miami 1, I think the soundtrack is actually better in 2. It's fucking incredible. Oh, I, I love this song. I think this is like a weird electronic cover of um, Slipknot's My Plague, and it's so fucking good. Okay, next we are cutting Portal 2. Portal 2, I think, has some of the best writing in any game I've ever played. Uh, I think it is, in a lot of ways, a less tight package than Portal 1, and I don't think the puzzles are as good. But I think just for the Cave Johnson segments and how much they squeeze out of... Um, like, I know they kind of milk GLaDOS a lot in Portal 2, but as one of my favorite game characters ever, I did not mind at all. I did not mind... Okay, okay. Okay, next it's gotta be Azora's Wrath. Um, I, oh, but does it, does it have to be Azora's Wrath? Mm. Chat. Chat, give me some input here. What do you, what, how do you guys feel about cutting Azura's Wrath? <laughs> get it out of here. Yes, please don't. Meh, fair. Let it keep going. Okay, look, we're gonna get... Look, we're gonna let Azura's Wrath ride. We're letting Azura's Wrath ride, okay? Um... Cuphead, Devotion, Disgaea, Doki Doki Lich, Dragon Quest, Earthbound. Okay, you know what? I think I can cut Garo, Mark of the Wolves. Um, I love this game. It is one of the best fighting games ever. I think for me, my love of this game nearly comes from more an appreciation because I've never been at a point in my life where I've known a bunch of other people also super into Grow and all of us play it together. I think if I had that, I would like, 
it would be one of my favorite games of all time, but I've never been at a point in my life where I am actively trying to get better at that game to beat other people. All my experience of this game comes from beating Arcade over and over and over. And it's an amazing game with some absolutely beautiful sprite work, and I wish they made Gorilla Mark of the Wolves too. I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but it's, 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 it's fucking incredible. Um, Majora's Mask, Man 2. Oh, this is getting tough. This is getting tough. I'm seeing you gotta cut 3D worlds, but do I? You know what? Actually, I'm just seeing Pop Art, Pop Pop Tart Kitty X in the chat. I think Banjo Kazooie. I think it's gone far enough. I love Banjo Kazooie. I think when you like, it was such an amazing game at the time. But when you get further away from it, I feel like when you look at what that did compared to what a lot of other 3D platformers did, I think maybe that's where it falls down a little bit. Um. It's a great game, but I think this is as far as it goes. Getting tough. Uh, no, that's not true. It's been tough. It is tough. Whew. I feel like all these games deserve to go higher than this, but it's like, it's just fucking impossible. Like, there's just not enough room. Okay, next I think it's gotta be Hyper Light Drifter. Um, one of the coolest games I have ever played. Uh, I love the feeling of this game. I think it's like, the way it tells its story with, okay, we gotta get some Hyper Light Drifter up on screen. So, I don't know, like, if you guys are familiar with this game, but, like, it is one of the best-looking games I have ever seen in my life. It is so beautiful. Look at that. Holy shit. It's all, like, just pixel art, and it is just some of the most beautiful... Like, not just pixel art, just art I have ever seen. Like, just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Just, like... S rank color design, S rank animation, just so beautiful. Um, and the crazy part is like you look at it and it's like, okay, I will play this game on how gorgeous it looks. It plays so smooth and so nice. And I never like dug into the story, but it seemed like there was shit going on. Like it seemed like there was a lot of fun stuff. Um, could not recommend it enough. I feel good about it going here, but yeah, excellent, excellent game. Okay, and that's it. We've made it past the Bridge of Killers onto the path of the Elite. We've done it, guys. And you know what that means. It is time for more donation readouts. Um, we are nearly at $2,000, which is just so insane. Um, now, where were we? Okay, John Walker. Um, I haven't watched the podcast yet. Thanks for the spoilers. Anyway, thanks for doing this. Quick question. Where Shovel Knight? 
I mean, I don't know. Where do where do you guys think that Shovel Knight should go? Just curious. Where should Shovel Knight go? What's wrong, guys? Why is why is everyone why is everyone looking concerned? Don't you fucking dare! Don't dare do what? Shadow Realm. People people want uh, Shovel Knight to go to the Shadow Realm. That's interesting. Okay, maybe we could run a poll. Is there any way we can run a poll? Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a poll real quick. Um, okay, guys, so we're going to vote on um, Shovel Knight. The vote's going to last two minutes, and I will put it in whatever position gets voted in. Okay, so this is entirely in your hands. I'm going to ask you to take this seriously. Um, so, like, don't, don't troll, don't fuck around, because, like, I don't want my list to get fucked up. And the poll is going live now. <laughs> oh, uh, let's uh, check the results. Oh, guys, uh, dead. It's actually, it's, whew. this is a tough one. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's close. It's pretty close here. If we check, um, hmm. It looks like Shovel Knight might actually be headed to the dead zone. And... That's not what I, I don't know that I would have placed it there. But um I mean this is up to you guys. I let you pick this and it seems like people are gonna send Shovel Knight to the dead zone. Wow, that you know, a little harsh maybe. But um I mean what can we do? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Just saw the chat go by. So John's gonna be arrested at the end of this, yeah. Um yeah, wow. I know, yeah, it, it looks like Dead Zone is coming with 52% of the votes. It looks like Shovel Knight is going to uh, the Dead Zone. What do I think of Shovel Knight? I don't think it's very good. I don't like it very much, but the Dead Zone, that's... I mean, that's harsh. That's a defiant statement. Um... Yeah, I think I think I've seen enough. I think we can call it, guys. Shovel Knight has been. Vo it's it's it does not get into the Bridge of Killers. It does not go into the Mountains of Quality. It does not get into the Gates of Acceptance. It does not get into the Shadow Realm. Shovel Knight ends up in the Dead Zone. Shovel Knight. Uh, yeah, it's official. It's official. The chat voted Shovel Knight into the dead zone. I'm appalled, honestly. Um, really shocked at that. But um, I guess that's what you guys wanted. You you wanted you wanted that. Um, so I I mean I I know people are upset, but now um I mean I guess what can we do? Anyway, why don't we read out a few more donations for this super good cause, okay? It's a very, again, it's a very positive stream. We're all kind of keeping it cool. Um, 
But you know, that's I think that's just how the cookie crumbles, my friends. You know, uh, again, wouldn't have been my choice, but that's what you guys wanted to do. So, I mean, who am I to say no to that? Um. Uh, Uncle Grandpa, hope you're having a good one. Oh, I really am. Um, please don't put Yakuza Seven in the dead zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, these are all from like an hour ago. Thank you so much for everything. You are amazing. My husband and I love your wonderful work. Wishing you all the best and everything. Um, I'm sorry it's not more. Uh, Pop-Tart Kitty, that's $15. Thank you so much. And thank you to Omani for $10. And um, I've, be um, I've been there with all the suffering. Stay strong. Much love, Can. Uh, I can ask a question. Do you consider Xenoblade... Can you consider Xenoblade Chronicles OG? I mean, I've played Xenoblade Chronicles. Is that what you're asking? Are you asking me to run the numbers on Xenoblade Chronicles and see where it ends up? What do you guys think in the chat? Where do you think uh, Xenoblade Chronicles should go? Just curious. Just curious. <laughs> oh. Man, you know, I wasn't going to, but I'm starting I'm starting to get a little itchy. I'm starting to maybe feel that uh No, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it in the no, it's it's safe. Don't worry about it guys. Um, next donation. It's going in the dead zone! It's going in the dead zone! Xenoblade Chronicles is going in the dead zone. And I have a very specific reason for this. Let this be a lesson to any fucking RPG that feels a need to implement shitty MMO combat. MMO combat is only a thing because the internet was bad and we had to make bad combat to go with it, okay? I don't like that combat. Everything else about Xenoblade Chronicles, mwah, fantastic. That combat, terrible, and so I'm delivering a message. Xenoblade Chronicles is in the dead zone. <laughs> oh. Final Fantasy 12 saves itself because of the gambit system. Okay, I'm gonna read a few more donations. I can't just keep pouring salt all over chat. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Pop Tart Kitty. You're always so nice to me, and yeah, I'm just being an asshole. Uh, Miki, ten dollars. Thank you so much for streaming such a good cause. Also, please put zero time dilemma in the dead zone where it belongs. Um, I will absolutely not. Um, Skippo Caesar. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Five dollars. All hail. A he with no name, um, Rask Raskal L, um, fifteen dollars. Just doing my thing to help out. A uh, great idea with the stream. Don't worry too much about chat. Those are your. Oh, I am not worried about chat at all. Me and chat are getting on magnificently. Um, I was a little surprised that they voted Shovel Knight into the dead zone. Um, I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't have done that, you know. But I'm also, you know, I get that I've made some controversial decisions and I had to give in to them at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, Garling Gangster 69 five dollars. Where is Kiss Psycho Circus the Nightmare Child? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a joke or not, dude. I've just never heard anyone argue for that game, but you do you. That's beautiful. Um, Morgan Co Morgan Coaster ten dollars. Um, nothing funny or interesting to say. Just a huge fan of what you do. Thank you, Morgan. Appreciate it. Uh, Groders, $20. Uh, love you, Massive Ranker. Um, don't know what that means, but thank you.
happening recently about like just a lot of I've been thinking about a lot of life shit. Uh, hitting a million subs makes you makes you think about life in a lot of ways because I know that's something a lot of people want. But the truth is, you hit a million and it's like one of the most anticlimactic things in the world. But um, I was recently thinking about like if I could do everything again, what would I do? And like that's with the knowledge I've already done YouTube, like and that I like doing that and that it was cool. I think if I was younger and I had like the confidence I do now and like the wherewithal I do now, I would without doubt go and train to be a pro wrestler and just give it everything I had. And I don't know that it would work out, but I would fucking love to do it so much. And I think doing these streams is like the closest I can do to just playing a heel wrestler and I have such a good time doing it, especially for shit like this. And so like... You know, if I'm talking shit about your game you like, it doesn't mean I actually dislike the game. I'm just having fun. Except Hades, which is actually a shit game. Um, Oh, sometimes I just like to say shit, and I just like to wait for the chat to catch up with it. It is so satisfying. Um, Skynia, Skynia, please spell emblem right. I'm gonna cry. Sure thing. Uh, let me see. Where is that? Um, here it is. I'll just correct that real quick. Because you were saying that kind of bothers you. And I don't want to cause anyone in the chat unnecessary stress. I might have to refresh here. There we go. All better. Okay, Path of the Elite, let's go. Which is the 70th best game of all time? And I think I gotta go with Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I've been eyeing this one for the last couple. I think it's a really cool game. I would challenge people to come up with a more intense, frightening moment than the battle with the Azora Ape. And I don't, I'm not gonna spoil it, but like, if you've played that battle, you know that there is quite possibly the most pants-shitting moment in video games. I think it's a brilliant game. I think its story is a lot simpler than the Souls games and really suffers. Um, oh, um, I think uh, Miyazaki is amazing, but I think his stories are better in the shadows than they are all out front. And it's a fucking fantastic game. It doesn't. It, it should go without saying that any game from this point on is absolute pure gold. And I could probably talk about it for hours. I could make videos about basically every game left on this list, but. Yeah, I'm, at some point we gotta cut him because I do want to sleep. I, I do want to get a couple of hours sleep tonight. Like, just if if you guys are unaware, it is nearly midnight in Ireland right now, and um, so it's it is. I am going to be tired by the time we are done this. You know, Hada Wadfad. You know, your fucking opinion is just wrong. <laughs> oh, buddy. Um, Tony Hawks has made it this far. Tony Hawks has made it exactly this far. The next game we are cutting is Tony Hawk 3. Um, I love this game. And I think, you know, I could argue that the remake of 1 and 2 is actually better than Tony Hawk 3. But I think when you take the Tony Hawk series as a whole and the impact they had back then, I felt like Tony Hawk 3 was the peak of that series and it was the peak of some really fucking cool cultural shit. Like, it was like, it was this moment that skater culture just broke into the mainstream in a way that was, like, so fucking good. Um, it gave me, it started me out in having a serious taste, serious taste in music, you know? It was, like, just, 
it was a beautiful game in so many ways, and I think of it very fondly, but I think 69 <laughs> is the right number for it. Next up, um, it's got to be Azura's Wrath. I, I love it. I can't, in good conscience, let it go any further. I love its story. I love its characters. I love Azura as a character. The moment where he holds his little fucking baby girl, and he's this god of rage and anger and passion, and he doesn't know how to quell her crying, it's beautiful. The fucking fist bump, I'm not going to spoil anything, the fist bump of Azura's Wrath, and how that, in like, you hitting X being this, like, little... Oh, one of the best moments of any game I've ever played. I love Azura's Wrath. I know Wooly doesn't like it. I know Matt doesn't like it. I'm sorry, but Wooly and Matt can can go fuck themselves because Azura's Wrath is a beautiful game and I love it and I hate anyone who doesn't like it. I mean that. I personally hate you if you don't like Azura's Wrath. Um, Raylag666, you must be new here. Uh, this list lacks Xenoblade Chronicles. Oh, buddy, it doesn't... It, we actually have Xenoblade Chronicles here. Um, it's just not on screen. Uh, if we if we go down past the Path of the Elite, past the Bridge of Killers, past the Mountains of Quality, past the Gates of Acceptance, past the Shadow Realm, you will find that the Dead Zone actually contains Xenoblade Chronicles. It's right there, buddy. It's right there. Oh, this must be, like, the most aggressive, angry charity stream there has ever been. Ah, oh, come on, dude. Psychonauts does not deserve to go in the dead zone. Um. Okay, I think I know what I'm cutting next. A fucking saxophone in this song is killer. Okay, Bahamut Lagoon next. Um, nobody knows what this fucking game is. Uh, it is one of the best RPGs on the Super Nintendo. I could even make an argument for it possibly being maybe the best RPG. Maybe the best RPG. What? No, I. You could make an argument for it being the best RPG. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it's it like that's how good this game is. It is up there. Um I think I don't know if there's even an official release for it. I think it might be a fan translation I played, but it's this game with branching storylines with great characters with this like really interesting kind of dragon system. It's kind of like a combination between like Pokémon and like a more standard like Tactics Ogre kind of thing. It's brilliant. Um, is Kingdom Hearts Dead Zone material? Um, the Duck is asking, what song is this? Let me just get that for you, buddy. Uh, this is Vampires by The Midnight. Really, really cool song. Uh, okay, look, I have to be real about Kingdom Hearts. I don't like Kingdom Hearts. I think those games play like garbage, and I don't think they're very good. But, I... <sighs> It's too weird for me to put it in the dead zone. Like, it's too fucking stupid. And as, as dumb as I think it is, I respect how individual it is. And I respect that there's nothing else like it. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, there's nothing else like Kingdom Hearts. And I think that's cool, even though I never want to play through one of those games. And I've tried. I've tried multiple times to play them, and I just, I don't like them. And I don't like their stories, and I don't like their writing. It's too weird for the Dead Zone. The Dead Zone has to have integrity, guys. It has to has like, it has, there has to be, not everything can go in there. Um, okay, let's keep it moving. Whoa. 
Okay, hold the phone. We got a we got a message here from uh, Jador San something. Also, John, have you heard about Blood of the Bahamut, the Japan only successor? Oh, get the fuck out, dude! I'd never heard of this. Um, let me look this up real quick. Apparently it came out on the DS? Wow, oh my god. What is this game? That looks wild. Okay, I'm gonna look into that. Thanks for the tip, dude. Appreciate it. Um... Oh, excuse me. Okay. I thought we cut Persona 4. Did we not? I guess we must not have. Hmm. Uh, Young Dangby, I'm actually currently playing through 13 Sentinels. I'm digging it. I like it. It's cool. Um, I have not played enough of it for it to be anywhere on this list, but yeah. Um... <sighs> and the next one I got to cut is Persona 4 Golden. Um I am guessing people are going to be very upset over this. I like Persona 4 a lot. I think Persona 4 is a cool game. There's things about it I don't like. I don't like the writing for a lot of the character arcs. I feel like a lot of the time the... I, I know I know people are upset. I feel like a lot of the time it kind of comes to this thing where it's like... The character's solution is fitting into society and... I'm not a big fan of that. Now, saying that, there's stuff I really do dig about it. I think it has the best characters of any Persona game. I think it has one of the coziest, most comfortable settings. It has a great atmosphere. It has a really good soundtrack. It's a really, really cool game. It's a lot of people's favorite game ever. But it is my 66th favorite game ever. Okay. Um, right where it belongs. What if everything around you isn't quite as it seems? I listened to this song a lot over Christmas. Head back in the game. Let's do this. Let's get cutting. If you look at your Jesus, this is tough. So I did this before and we got to number 70 and I stopped there. And so we're past that now. And I kept meaning to do it, but then like enough time went by. So I was like, fuck it, let's do it again. But God, this is really difficult. Okay, I think I know what I'm cutting next. Find yourself afraid to see. Such a good song. Okay. Next game we are cutting is Witch's House. One of my favorite horror games ever. 
fucking brilliant game uh, made by one dude. No one even knows much about him or who he is. Kind of just appeared on the internet one day. A little indie RPG maker game. And if you ever thought that an RPG maker game couldn't be scary, I implore you to go play Witch's House and play it by yourself alone at like fucking midnight. It is a freaky ass game. And I think I really, really liked it. Uh... Your feed is a PowerPoint presentation? Oh dear. Uh... It's a really good time. Ah uh, shit, so the stream is getting real choppy. Hang on. Yeah, hmm. Shit. It's not too bad. We're on a wired connection, so we should be alright. Okay, I'm gonna play it out for about five minutes and hopefully it'll be grand, and if it's not, we'll just reconnect to the lower bit, right? It's fine now. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna be okay. Um, okay. Is that all you want to be? What if you could look right through the cracks? Would you find yourself? Holy shit, the Magfest board of directors just resigned. I feel like maybe this isn't the point to discuss this, but I've been following that very closely, and I am shocked. Okay, I'm gonna have to dig through that later. Magfest is a hugely important con to me, and I was very concerned to see, like... Wow, oh my god. Holy shit. That's huge. Anyway, can't think about that right now, gonna dig into that later. Um, okay, I, I, I keep trying to get going, and I keep getting sidetracked. Okay. Let's burn through this. Vayna 2, Bloodborne, Capcom, Chrono Trigger, Cuphead, Dark Souls, Dead Rising, Devil May Cry 5, Devotion, Disgaea, Don Kong Country 2, Don Tropical Freeze, Dragon Quest 11. Oh, fuck, this is so hard. Gunstar Heroes, Half Life, Legend of Mystical Ninja, Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I feel like every game left on this. Oh, what a fucking song! This is called Tokyo Rose, and it's amazing. This, it's by Tokyo Rose, and it's called Endgame. One of my favorite songs ever. Fucking brilliant. Um, okay, next one, I think it's gotta be Spelunky 2. Um, I have played more Spelunky last year than I think I played any other game. Me and my cousin Brian do co-op in it, and... I went from not understanding Spelunky to just seeing why especially game designers love that game. Um, oh, has Wooly raided? Um, <laughs> thanks so much, Wooly. Um, <laughs> Father Wooly, John is mean to Hades. I'm not mean to Hades, I just think it's a fine game and it is... I don't even think it's fine. I think it's good. I just think it's 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 the ninetieth best game ever, you know. And like I can't. I mean, uh, who's I can't. Who can argue with that? It's the ninetieth best game ever. You know, it's not in the shadow realm. It's not in the dead zone. It's it's just here. Um, but Azura's Wrath is a way better game than it. Like it's just it's just undeniable. Like it's you cannot even fucking doubt that. Um. You know, no, 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 Hades has its merits. It's for some people. I mean, personally, I am kind of like of a more intellectual kind of type of person. You know, it's not just kind of mash the buttons and succeed. But, um... <laughs> Wooly will be gone in about 60 seconds, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's keep going here. Splunky 2, beautifully designed game. Like, if you care about game design, I think people should check Splunky 2. Again, I could talk for hours about it, but I think 64 is about the right place for it. Oh. 
Oh, this is so tough. Um, Bebop Rocky asks, hey bro, kind of a tangent, but are you still doing BJJ? Uh, I am still, well, actually I'm not. I haven't done BJJ in about a year. That's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, basically just because Ireland's in fucking lockdown and our country is currently riddled with the pandemic and it's had to stop. I miss it so much. I'm not, I've had so many weird conversations with my friends about this, but like I am not me unless I can like fight. Um, and I miss just fighting and rolling and sparring so, so badly, but like there's just nothing I can do about it. And like, I just kind of have to accept it for the moment. And I want to go back like the second the gyms open up again, but yeah, it sucks. I miss it so, so much. Okay, there was one game that I felt good about cutting here. What was it? Okay, next game we are cutting is Mega Man 2. Um, one of the best games ever easily absolutely fantastic game i think like a real technical achievement but i think moving forward every game has to be like just that absolute killer and this is the only one i can like this is the only one i can pick out where like okay i don't think i can say that about this love the game spent so many childhood years playing it but that's it next <sighs> God, this is a nightmare. This is so hard. Capcom vs. Geku, Cuphead, Danganronpa. <sighs> okay, next up is Dragon Quest XI. Here's my justification for this. I think Dragon Quest XI is like nearly the ultimate like 9 out of 10 game. Everything about that game is good. The characters are fun, the gameplay is great, it looks beautiful, its world is really interesting, its story is pretty good. But I would say Dragon Quest XI, the only thing it's missing is that really personal X factor to just push it into like one of the best games of all time and what i mean by that is i feel like it is a game meticulously crafted by people who know the fuck out of rpgs and have just made this like beautifully polished experience but for me it's maybe missing that kind of personal touch that makes a game or any piece of art really really beautiful and I still love it and I still think it is it is like one of the best crafted games I've ever played but yeah I think it's just missing that X factor to go further. Oh, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Um Okay. That's such a good song. Like, yeah, someone's saying that Dragon Quest XI is kind of a reboot. If anything, it makes me more excited for twelve. Yeah, I want to see them do something fucking crazy and weird for twelve. Like, that's they have such a good setup now to do something like that. I don't know if they will, but when, when Dragon Quest gets weird, it can get really weird. So let's hope. Um Okay, one more before we get to the doorway of the best. Which game does not make it into the top 60 games ever? And I think it is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I think, I feel like everything I just said about 
Dragon Quest 11. Oh dear, I have messed this up. Um, everything I just said about Dragon Quest 11, I nearly feel like I could say about platformers and tropical freeze. Um, I will say, I think in a lot of ways it could be maybe the best 2D platformer gameplay wise. I think it's amazing. I think it's levels, the way they like build thematically on each other are like just fucking incredible. Um, and I love that about it. I think it's, uh, uh, words are failing me to describe this game, but if you maybe played the original Donkey Kong Country um, Returns and you haven't played Tropical Freeze, you do not understand what an amazing step up that is. And so I, 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 I love that game. It, it hurts cutting it. We are getting to the point now, chat, where I am the one being hurt. Uh, this is hurting me. I can't, I cannot, I just, it makes me sad. Those are such, like, Dragon Quest XI and they could, they, they could have gone further, but there's just more. And with that chat, we gotta go read some donations. Uh, fucking hell, we're at $2,176. Thank you so much to everyone who's donated. Um, uh, how many Kirby games do you have to work how many Kirby games do you have to work with on this list? Glad to see you raising money for a great cause. And that's from Tengu Gemini, $20. Well, I don't know. If anyone wants to, like, throw out some Kirby games and we can see where they land, you know, feel free. We can we can absolutely do that. Um, NeckDW4, $10. Um, Rabbi Rabbi and the King's Field series not being a top five is a literal crime against... I have no idea what Rabbi Ribby even is. I know King's Field, never heard of that before in my life, but you do, you dude. Owen donated $20, uh, so I know you're not really a shooter guy, but like to submit Medal of Honor Fortnite on the PS2 for consideration. Um, or Medal of Honor Frontline on the PS2 for consideration, which I think to me is Shenmue, it is to you. I have played Frontline, not my thing, but again, you do, you dude. Kellen, five dollars. Um, do you have any plans to talk about Evangelion on your channel again? Oh, I was thinking recently how if I ever did like a full Ava video, like a proper Ava video, that might be the last video I ever do. And I'm not sure about that, but I just feel like Ava is maybe my favorite anime ever. It is the center of so many things for me and I don't know where I would go or what I would be after an Ava video because I think that would emotionally annihilate me. Like, it's weird, but like when you make videos about things you really care about, there's like this weird emotional fatigue that comes with it. Like whenever I did my videos on Dragon Ball Z or Yu Yu Hakusho or even like that last Undertale video, I was like emotionally like wiped out for like weeks afterwards and like I feel like I'm only recovering now. Um, like I, I had to take some a lot of time off after that Undertale video because like the burnout was fucking real like I really and Then like it kind of coalesced with hitting a million as well and kind of hitting a mil million also Took a weird toll on me that I was not expecting but um, I think Ava might just annihilate me so I think it's inevitable. I do a big Ava video. I Don't know when and I think I'd have to be kind of in the right place for it. And I don't know if I'd ever make another video after that. It's 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 a weird one. But yeah, at some point, an Ava video will happen. Uh, Ian Blacker, $15. Joined the stream late because I am in Australia and miss a bit. But was wondering if Breath of the Wild uh, has or deserves a place on your list. Breath of the Wild. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I don't know, chat. What do you think? What do you guys think of Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild? Do people like that game? Is that like a is that like a popular game? <laughs> What's wrong? Why is everyone so scared? Why is everyone so scared? <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dead zone Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is good. I don't think it's good enough to make the Shadow Realm. Um I get people love it. I respect it, but I respect it more than I like it. Um PK something, five dollars. 
Uh, hey John, I've loved your stuff for years, and I'm happy to see you doing this stream for a good cause. Please though, can you not make, can you not make re jokes? I was a meme made up to make fun of autistic people. If you um, uh, origins don't, uh, PK something. I'm sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, sorry, dude. I have no idea what that is in reference to um aura and Dernlaw, and um, great co great cause and great content creator i have i'm having a great time and seeing your gaming hot takes thank you uh deficient olive a hundred dollars thank you so much wow that is that is incredible that is incredibly kind um rolander one dollar love your work loving the stream do you mind uh moving the games to the right hand closer together so there's no less gaps is that okay also bridge of killers is the um is most of my favorite games which hurts no way okay that's kind of interesting and um, kg twenty dollars a uh, great cause I actually saw you and brian in the park today wow that's that's insane yeah me and brian were in a, um yeah look dude if you ever see me like don't like track down where i live or anything but you know if you want to say hi go for it i mean i'm, I'm always happy for that um anonymous ten dollars and um, all hail the nameless one that love love that moment and love the work you do thank you so much i the nameless reveal i'm not going to explain what it is but it's one of like the most creatively fulfilling things i've ever done um have you read the scott pilgrim comics if you do what do you think of them i like them i don't like them as much as a lot of people do but i love the artwork um, McKirby, five dollars. Please read this message twice. People, read this message. Please read this message twice. There you go. You, you did it. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, dude. Um, Parmenseni, um, twenty dollars. Thank you for absolutely destroying my plan schedule every time you drop a video. Hollow B, ten dollars. Number one, you're a monster for what you did to Shovel Knight. Number two, um, and I might have missed this. Where's the discussion on Persona Five Royale? Um, I haven't played Persona 5 Royale. Persona 5 is a good game, but it's not better than Persona 4. Um, so let me just find... Okay. Now, we're going for the doorway of the best. Doorway of the best. Here's where shit gets even fucking realer. Okay. Um, we got a question about Hades. Hades is number 90, which I think is pretty good. I think Hades is a very good game. I just think there's... 89 games that are better than it and I know everyone's all in love with Hades and everyone really likes it But in a year or two, I think you'll all kind of come around to my way of thinking um Dead zone doki doki I will not I refuse okay Oh fuck this is hard Okay, number 60 is going to be Danganronpa 2. Um, I love Danganronpa 2. Some of the twists at the end of that game were the hardest, most fucked up swerves I've ever experienced in a video game. There was a point where I knew what was going on, where I thought I knew what was going on, and it pulled back so hard and kept pulling back and revealing and revealing. And I played the whole thing in this four hour chunk as in like the end. And it just like, it destroyed me. It was fucking great. And um, I see people asking about Celeste and Celeste is not on this list, but I will happily put it in the Shadow Realm. Um, not top 100, but a damn fine game. Okay. Uh, 
This is nearly hard because I feel like this is less about like these games having any kind of flaw that I can pull out to dismiss them and more so just like how raw I feel about each one, like which ones get me really fucking excited and which don't. Like, okay, next cut is going to be Doki Doki Literature Club. I love this game. There's nothing bad I can say about this game. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think it has any faults. Um, it is a really fucking cool visual novel horror game. But when I compare it to the other like genre defining shit on this list, it just doesn't hold up to that standard. I love it. If you haven't played it, go play it. It's a lot of fun. I think it's free. Uh, there's like some there's some pretty troubling content in there, so make sure you check that out if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff. But I absolutely love that game. Um. Whew. Damn, this is tough. <sighs> okay, at number 58, and this hurts. This hurts me, okay? I am not happy about this. Is Yume Nikki. I adore Yume Nikki. One of, like, in a lot of ways, one of the most important games of all time. I think it's fucking brilliant. But... I think, like, when you look at that game and what it is, it's like an experience in a lot of ways, and I could absolutely see it not clicking with someone. Um, uh, but it's like... It's just so hard for me to justify that tiny game, even though, like, that's part of what's cool. Like, it's really personal, and it's sad, and it's important. But it's really difficult to, like, do I think it's better than Yakuza 0, Wind Waker, WWE No Mercy, Virtua Fighter 4? I do not. And, like, I love the game, but I cannot push it past them. Oh, this is hard. This is really hard. Okay, moving forward. The number 57th best game of all time. I never played the Yume Nikki remake, should I? I think it's gotta be Disgaea. I think it's gotta be Disgaea. Um, again, incredible RPG. I think if there's one thing I could knock it for, it's like the characters are great, the story maybe not so much. Um, but I love the gameplay. I think it's still the best Disgaea. I haven't played a better Disgaea. Guys, look. We knew this was going to get tough. We knew this was going to get card. Uh, Ultra Force raises a good point. Is Super Punch-Out actually better than Wii Punch-Out? I would say yes, just because I think Super Punch-Out is a better feeling game, but yeah, I could see the argument there. I think uh, Wii Punch-Out is a lot more a complicated game in some ways. Okay, let's keep going. Mm. Pass, Mass Effect 2, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Metal Gear Solid 2, Mother 3, oh my god. Okay, this is gonna piss a lot of people off, but I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta do it, okay? The next game I'm cutting is Pokemon Soul Silver. I think in a lot of ways, this is the best Pokemon game that exists. I love it, okay? Um... 
But I also think it's in Soul Silver. You can see my biggest problem with Pokemon. Okay, I know, I know. Let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. What I dislike about the Pokemon series is it evolves at a glacial pace, okay? And Soul Silver is, in a lot of ways, the encapsulation of that. It's like it is a remake of Silver, which was so similar to Blue and Red, and there's so much good shit about it. And I'm gonna remind you how many, how many like other games it is above. And like we'll get to Blue. I'll get to Blue. I see people saying like, how is this above Blue? We'll get to Blue, but we are not getting to Blue for a while because Blue is one of the best fucking games ever made. Okay, we will get to that. But I feel like what Pokemon Soul Silver does well is it perfects a lot of the concepts introduced in Blue. But what it is not is an evolution of Pokemon, and I still feel that Pokemon is suffering from that. Every new Pokemon game is like a quarter step forward, and I want something new. And I feel like I can hang that criticism on Soul Silver as well. It's a better game. Like I'm not gonna argue. Like if someone wanted to play original Blue over Pokemon Soul Silver, I'd like no, dude. If this is your first Pokemon game, play Soul Silver. It rules. But that's not what this list is. This is about the games I feel super strongly about, and I gotta Foxcade. Get the fuck out of my chat. I've warned you about coming about these streams. Get out of here. I do not want your opinion. Don't anyone acknowledge Foxcade? I he knows he he knows you shouldn't be here. Um. So yeah, Pokemon Soul Silver at number 56. You can hate me all you want. You like you, I I'm cool with it. I it doesn't you can't hurt me at this point. I am hurting myself with this list. It is it is so <laughs> I'm just seeing everyone. Oh. Guys, it's a positive list. It's a positive list. Okay, next item, keep, oh my god. So I'll tell you what happens, right? Like, I'm looking at this stuff, and it's like, I'm feeling each video game. I'm feeling my affection for each video game. And it's like Bayonetta 2, still feel real strong about that. Bloodborne, still feel real strong about that. That Capcom vs. K2, still feel real strong about that. But then you look at something, and you look at Binding of Isaac, and for the first time in this entire thing, I have, like, felt my resolve waver on Binding of Isaac, and I did not think that would happen so soon. Hades better than Isaac, get out of here. Get the fuck out of my stream. You're not welcome. You are just not welcome. Shit, I think it's Binding of Isaac. I think it's actually Binding of Isaac. I can't believe that's not making it further. Oh, I see we have a question in the chat about Nier Automata. That's a pretty popular game, isn't it? People really like Nier Automata. What? Why is everyone so upset? Why is everyone scared in the chat? I'm just talking about Nier Automata, a very popular game. Foxcade, um, if you're still here, people seem to be upset because, you see, past the doorway of the best, past the path of the elite, past the bridge of killers, past the mountains of quality, past the gates of acceptance, we have the Shadow Realm. This is the realm where games did not make the top 100, okay? But these are all great games, but past the Shadow Realm, we have the Dead Zone. And the dead zone is where I go all the games I do not like. Shenmue 3, Final Fantasy 15, Mario Odyssey, Gaelic Games PS2, Crash Bandicoot, Yakuza 7, Shovel Knight, Xenoblade Chronicles. And I think what people are scared is going to happen is they're scared that I'm gonna type Nier Automata into this dead zone. 
you know, kind of like this. And that's what I would do if I thought Nier Automata was a bad game, but I actually really like Nier Automata. I have problems with it, but um, it's not like a game I hate or anything. It's actually a game I wish I understood more than I do, and it deserves a place in the Shadow Realm. Um, I'm actually going to replay Nier Automata soon, and I'm going to play it all the way through because I... I want to like that game, and there's things aesthetically and thematically I love about that game. I don't like the characters that much, and I definitely don't like it as much as Nier 1. But yeah, for now it gets a place in the Shadow Realm. Who knows, maybe in a year we do all this again and it actually goes higher. But yeah. Nier. Oh, we have a spelling correction. It's N-E-I-R. Okay, let me change that real quick, because I don't like these lists to be sloppy. There we go. Um, uh, ask people, someone asking why I don't like Yakuza 7 because it's a terrible RPG. It's an okay Yakuza game and a terrible RPG. Um, okay, here we go. Foxcade, I agree. Like, OG Nier has some fucking incredible characters. Uh, people asking what song this is. This is all. This is what also one of my favorite songs ever, and it's called "Decay," and it's by the band Home. Mm, 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 mm. A lot of people might know that from the Simpsons Wave uh, Homer video, which is just amazing. Okay. We never cut Binding of Isaac, did we? Um, the tone, will you make a video explaining why you dislike Yakuza 7 in more detail? Uh, probably not. Just because, like, I don't have the passion in me to make a full video about Yakuza 7, which is, like, like what, a 70, 100 hour game. And it's not like I hate the game, I'm just deeply disappointed by it. But, um, and there's stuff I like about it, like, Ichiban's a cool character, but I just, I think the gameplay in it sucks so much, and... Maybe at some point I'll talk about it, but I don't know. It seems like the kind of video that would also get a lot of hate, and that stuff can wear you down over time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. <sighs> Next cut is going to be Phoenix Wright. Um, the game that got me into visual novels. It's such a good game. Uh, I really, really enjoy everything about it. I love the art style, I love the character designs, I love the, um... I love, I, I love Edgeworth. Edgeworth is one of the best, he's just fucking Lawyer Vegeta, and I adore him. There's so few games on this list I can even think of pushing it past, and it's, it's gotta go here. It's gotta go. Um... Why is Shenmue 2 still there? Why is one of the greatest games of all time still there? I, I mean, you, you, you tell me. You know, I mean, Shenmue too. You just can't, can't beat it. Um, I see people in the chat telling me that I've spelt Phoenix right correctly, and I know that. You, d I don't know why you would feel a need to tell me that. Um, okay, let's keep moving. Oh. <sighs> Okay, next on the list is Gunstar Heroes. Um, I know most of you aren't going to know what this game is, but I also know there's probably two or three of you right now screaming your fucking heads off. I love Gunstar Heroes. It's such a weird, unique platformer slash shoot 'em up slash fighting game, and it does it all with such amazing style and flair. 
the only arguments I can give to it not going further just being I think there's more influential better games on this list it is such a beautiful game like look at look at like look at the fucking love in it in the chat right now that is how great this game is and it's treasure who are a fucking treasure of a studio they are brilliant and I love it I think it's their best game it's one of the best games on the Sega Mega Drive this is as far as it goes Seven Force is the coolest boss ever. Oh, the fucking dice maze, dude. It's amazing. Okay. Moving forward. Oh, for the first time, I just felt my, res I felt my resolve waver on Streets of Rage 2. Oh fuck, you know what I did? I just realized the next game that's going is Bloodborne. And um, I am guessing that's going to be deeply unpopular. I love Bloodborne, I don't like it as much as Dark Souls. And I think one of the only reasons I feel okay put, like cutting it is there's a, what I feel like is a really basic, I know, I know, I know, it's not bullshit, you're all fucking insane. No, let me finish, let me finish. Um, I... With Bloodborne, the one thing I fucking hate about this game is I hate how you run out of like blood vials and bullets, okay? I wish they just regen, like if it, can anyone offer me a good explanation for why it works like that? Because it, to me, that just adds all this completely pointless, just grinding and like unnecessary shit to an otherwise nearly flawless game. And I love it. Like Orphan Akos, what a fucking amazing boss fight. Um, the Murgo's Wet Nurse, incredible. There's so much great shit about this game. Some of the best art direction out of any game I've ever played. I think the way they reinvented the Souls formula was fantastic. I could see, this is Brian's favorite game ever. And I don't, I, I have no fault in that. But for me, there's just 51 games... Yeah, like, like even Fox is kind of agreeing with me with the Blood Files shit. And for me, I just prefer the gameplay of Dark Souls because I like to kind of... I like to have slow, heavy weapons and that shit is difficult in Bloodborne. So, which game do I think is better than Bloodborne? Which game do I think is number 51 on this list, but also not one of the best 50 best games of all time? Okay, I know which it is. This is going to be another very upsetting one to a lot of people. Okay. The 51st get at the very front of the doorway of the best. Just barely not getting into the threshold of brilliance is Earthbound. Okay, I'm just going to let chat explode for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, look, here it is, all right? I have recently played through the vast majority of Earthbound. This isn't like some hot take. This is something that I have, like, I've replayed it for the second time all the way through. It's a fucking great game. It is fun. It has heart and soul. It's weird. It's beautiful. It did things so differently from a lot of shit back in the day, okay? It is good. But... <sighs> I feel like... When you think about Lisa the Painful, when you think about Undertale, when you think about especially Mother 3, 
I feel like all those games took what Earthbound did and kind of moved it on to the next phase. And when you have played all of them and you go back and play Earthbound, to me, it's hard not to feel like something's missing. It's hard not to feel like the battle system isn't really that interesting. It's hard to feel like maybe the story doesn't really have a whole lot to say to me. In my opinion, I feel like maybe the story, like, and if there, like, is there anyone in the chat who can honestly say that Earthbound even comes close to Mother 3? Because to me, Mother 3, like, Mother 3 were talking fucking top 10 game. And I don't want to, like, get into, like, what games I think are going to be top 10. But Mother 3 is as close to perfect as a game has ever been. And I... Okay, like this is super harsh, but uh, Red Vidson says Earthbound is a crumpy, quirky Dragon Quest game. And I kind of agree with that, especially when you compare it to Mother 3, okay? And like it's, it's, it is, it is harsh, but I feel like. See, I, I feel like people are kind of coming around on a bit, yeah? And I'm going to stick with that decision at the, at the, Threshold of brilliance is Mother 3. Guys, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and get a water. I'll be back in one second and we'll read some donations. And we're back. Um, okay, let's get some donations in. Um, Hollow B, ten dollars. Number one, you're a monster for what you did to Shovel Knight. And number two, um, I might have missed this. Where's the discourse? Oh yeah, and we already read that. Oni Dino, good to see you, buddy. Um, the Queens will rise again. Bread for Quals. Uh, missed most of the stream, but thank you. This is an awesome cause. Your vids have helped me through rough days since uni. You're beautiful. Thank you so much. Like, um, sometimes people ask me, like, what the target audience for my videos are and stuff. Like, this, someone asked me this during an interview during the week. And, like, the thing I always say is, like, the genuine, the genuine purpose of my videos is, like, I think of it like someone comes home from, like, a shitty day at work. Like, they are in a bad mood. Things are going wrong in their personal life, whatever. I like the idea that they can just sit in front of my videos for 30 minutes and just forget about their fucking problems and just be able to zone out and just get a little escape from reality. That is all I am trying to do in my video. I don't see them as educational. I don't see them as like teaching people things. I literally just want to give people a little break from the kind of horrifying reality that is like the modern world. And so when I get messages like that, it does mean a lot. So thank you. Thank you, Bread for Quals. Uh, Maxithix. 
uh, ten dollars. Uh, good stream, good charity, awful taste. <laughs> Please talk about Ghost Trick, um, but don't dead zone it. Um, don't dead zone it, you bastard. We talked about you, my Nikki, at Magfest um, 20, and it was cool. You should put it in the top 10. Thanks, you're right about Xenoblade and the combat blows. You are wrong about Yakuza 7. That combat rules. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Everyone's wrong. Um, thank you for the donation, dude. Birdie. Five dollars. Um, I think you should put Dark Souls 3 in the dead zone because I don't like that game. And no, Dark Souls 3 is totally fine. It's totally fine. It's a good game. Thank you for the donation. Um, Eichmann, five dollars. So would Mario Odyssey get a higher grade if Mario had a baby outfit? Since we all know that side quests in Yakuza 7 and Movie Baby awaken something in you, John. And no, I, do, I just look. The the Movie Baby is a weird, fascinating movie. It's not. I don't. I'm not having this discussion again. That's no. Um, Kozanagi, twelve dollars. Uh, so the dead zone is all the games you'd recommend. No, it's all the worst games in existence. Um, Rico Nico, five dollars and a little heart. Thank you, Rico. Um, Anonymous, five dollars. It's a shame the Primal Aspids took Hollow Knight from number one to eighty-four. <laughs> um, Vexing Gross. At uh, $10, John, you are a magnificent troll, raising money for a good cause. May the reign of the nameless be enshrined in glory. Unrelated, who is your favorite Final Fantasy VI character? Um, I love Shadow because he is a dog, but I love Kefka as well. Uh, Matt and Marissa donated $20. Shenouts, let's fight a brass crew for all the hours of entertainment and comfort over the years. Thank you for doing this. DMC5 in the top 20 jackpot. Mm, we'll see. That I, th I think... I'm not sure that's gonna happen, but we'll see. Swabble King, $20. Big fan of your content. Your last Undertale video blew my mind. Thank you, dude. Um, Ophius, $5. Have you played the, um, have you played the other two Operation Rainfall games, Pandora's Tomorrow and The Last Story? They're really good, but get overshadowed by Xenoblade. No, I've wanted to play The Last Story for a long time though. Anonymous, $1. Um, Jade or something, $5. Hey, Joho, thanks for channeling the chat's rage into a good cause. Can't wait for the trash top five picks. Hope you're enjoying the lovely Irish weather today. Um, Mats, Mites, Mitesu, apologies for the mispronunciation. Hey, John, I love your videos. I'm sad. Uh, sad you think VLR is better than 999, but I respect your opinion. Also, my art history professor watches your videos and uses them in class. Lol, have it. Jesus Christ. I always feel like if society has gotten to the point that educators are showing students my videos, we are fucked. Like, forget the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The fact that they're using some B grade Irish anime YouTuber to teach young people things is terrifying. Um. Greasy Nameless Child, $20. So, whatever happens to AI, the Somnium Files, uh, ZTD walked that this game could run, and I was surprised not to see it in the Shadow Realm, at least. Um, I haven't beat AI Som Somnium Files yet. I need to go back to it. There's a chance it could end up in the Shadow Realm. Maybe it could break, like, spots 100 to 90 if it's really good, but yeah. Um, we'll see. Like, I think I need to see where that game's going to have a proper opinion on it. Anonymous, $5. Thanks for supporting an important cause while providing us delicious game materials. Also, where's PMD's Explorers of the Sky? I don't even know what that is. Uh, Gabe Sweetman, $20. Um, hi, John. Reach out anytime. Gabe, I actually will do. I mean to contact you about, like, just all the stuff going on with Mag. Um, I, I will be in touch in a little while. Um, okay, let's get back to it. Mm -mm. Whew, okay. I like it when we start a new section and a new song kicks in. I always think that's kind of beautiful. Um, so we're at the threshold of brilliance. These are not fucking games anymore, my friends. These are art. This is some real ass shit. And I know I say this every, but like literally everything we just talked about, toss it in the garbage, nothing compared to what's coming. Okay. Okay. At number 50, we're gonna drop Cuphead. Um, brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant, amazing gameplay. Maybe the best art, the strongest art style out of any game on this list. But um It's it's gotta be Cuphead. It's just gotta be Cuphead. 
And I think if the platform sections worked better in Cuphead, I think I could nearly push it higher, but it's hard not to, it's hard not to think about like how frustrating those sections are and how good, like compared to how good the rest of the game is. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have, I have like a video on Cuphead that you could watch, but it's, it's, it's a fucking cool game, but I think this is as far as it goes. Next. I think the next game I got a cut, and this really hurts, but I think it's Beautiful Joe. Um, again, another game with just such an incredible amount of style, so much fun to play. There's so much shit to love about this game, but yeah, I think I think this this is kind of as far as it goes. And um, it's fucking brilliant, but. Yeah, it's a shame. It's never, I don't think it's ever been re-released on anything except the PlayStation 2 compared to the original GameCube. Maybe they were actually released at the same time. I don't remember. But um, some of the best boss battles, some of the most interesting gameplay mechanics. I love that game. But yeah, I think I gotta leave it here. Henshin a gone gone, baby. Hmm... Okay, okay. I think next, this is going to be unpopular as well, the next one is going to be Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I adore that game. I love it. I think it's brilliant. It has some of my favorite boss battles of all time. The battle with the senator at the end, just, just incredible. I think there's things about the gameplay I don't love. I don't think it's Platinum's strongest game. The soundtrack is amazing. I don't disagree with anyone in the chat saying it's a masterpiece. I love it. But I think when you compare it to just everything else on here, for me, it just doesn't hold up. And I, th I feel good about it being there. It's hard, but yeah. Oh no. Oh no, I think I know what's coming next. Oh no. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Okay. Guys, I think the next game I'm going to cut. Oh. Is Chrono Trigger. Um, I'm just going to give chat a minute to... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, look, look, here it is. There is no way I'm ever going to make the argument that Cro that Secret of Mana is a better game than Chrono Trigger. It just flat out isn't. Story-wise, character-wise, it's just not. Gameplay-wise, Chrono Trigger beats the shit out of Secret of Mana. I love Chrono Trigger. 
there is an X factor to just the atmosphere of fee and feeling of Secret of Mana. And like, it's related to a lot of really personal shit with me. And I'll get into it when we cut Secret of Mana, but like, for me, Chrono Trigger is a really excellent game, but I also just do not... I've never had quite the reverence for it a lot of people do. I think it's a really, really, really... Like, you could take everything I said about Dragon... Mm, no, that's not true. Chrono Trigger does do some amazing shit with their main character, with time travel, with, like, it's got a killer soundtrack. It has beautiful character designs by Toriyama. I love Chrono Trigger, just not as much as I love 46 other games. Doki Doki is still on the list? No, it's not. No, dude, we cut, we cut Doki Doki a while ago. Doki Doki is number 59. I don't think Doki Doki Literature Club is a better game than Chrono Trigger. That would be insane. But yeah, there it goes. Listen, 47 is... It's, it's good, okay? Um, someone asking what this song is. This is Marks of Despair from Off, D Off Dream. And there's like a cross through the O. Okay. Um. Whew. Next up. Great song. I'm not ready to cut 3D World. I think that's maybe the best 3D Mario game. But man, maybe I'm not that far off either. Oh, this is so hard. Oh! There is a Jeff just had a uh, interesting suggestion. There's a Jeff just suggested the Resident Evil 2 remake. Hmm. Hmm. Where should the Resident Evil 2 remake go? That's an interesting question, I think. I mean, is the Resident Evil 2 remake as good as Chrono Trigger? No, I don't think so. Is it as good as Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? Mm. Beautiful Joe, Cuphead, Earthbound, Bloodborne, Gunstar Heroes, Phoenix Wright, Binding of Isaac, Pokemon Soul Silver, Disgaea, Yume Nikki, Doki Doki Literature Club, Rapid 2. Any of those games? No, no, I don't think so. Tropical Freeze, Dragon Quest XI, Mega Man 2, Spelunky, Witch's House, Persona 4 Golden, Bahamut Lagoon, Azura's Wrath, Tony Hawk 3, Sekiro, Shadowstar Twice, Hyperlight Drifter, Banjo-Kazooie, Garo Mark of the Wolves, Portal, Hollow Miami Cave Story, A Deadly Premonition, no, I don't I don't think so, I, I really don't think so. 999, Hollow Knight, Guilty Gear Xerd, Revelator, Fallout New Vegas, FTL, Deadly Premonition, oh shit, we're at, we're at the bottom of the... We're at the bottom of the top 100. I guess the Resident Evil 2 remake didn't make the top 100. That sucks, but surely, surely we can find a place for it in the Shadow Realm. Surely. Right? Right? 
Is it as good as Let It Die, South Park's Stick of Truth, Joe and Max, Super Double Dragon, Tiny Toons Adventures? Is Resident Evil 2 Remake as good as Tiny Toon Adventures? I don't think it is. I don't think it is as good as Tiny Toons Adventures. Delta Ruin, No More Heroes, Muramasa and the Demon Blade, Simon the Sorcerer 2, Dragon Ball Z, Choo Choo Rocket, WrestleMania 2000, Buster Move, Sunset Riders, Silent Hill 3, Evo Search for Eden, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Into the Bree. Yeah, no, it's not as good as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. People were freaking out when I could Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's better than Resident Evil 2 Remake. Just saying. Just saying. Wario Land, Thumper, Metal Slug 3, Day of the Kentacle, GoldenEye, Anodyne, Tekken Tag Tournament, River City Girls, Celeste, I don't think so. Lilac Wars, Harvest Moon, XCOM Enemy Unknown, Shadow of the Colossus, King of Fighters, Celeste, Dark Chronicle, SSX Tricky, Silent Hill, Shadow Memories, World of Horror, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, Shenmue 1. Is it better than Shenmue 1? Nah, nah, it's not. Soul Reaver, Near Automata. Oh. What? What's this? We're, we're at the bottom of the Shadow Realm? But wait, what's this? What's this? The Dead Zone? Does the Resident Evil 2 remake belong in the Dead Zone? No. No, that's impossible. That's impossible. I mean, it's not like the Resident Evil 2 remake took Resident Evil and made it a fucking action movie. So what's so what's better than Chrono Trigger? <laughs> I mean, guys, if you want to talk about Resident Evil 6, I hear people saying, like, no, Resident Evil 6 did that. Do you guys really want to talk about Resident Evil 6? Because I can talk about Resident Evil 6. I can talk about a game that has three good hours at the start and nothing else. <laughs> mm, okay. Where else are we going? Okay, okay, you know what? I'm actually second guessing myself. I think I am going to cut Super Mario 3D World. Um, a lot of people don't like this game. I've seen a lot of people say they think it's like the second worst 3D Mario game. I think that's insane. I think the level of creativity in that game is fucking beautiful. I think it does so much with like how it works its levels. Every level feels new and interesting. Every one of them is like really, it's, it's just like, feels like it's this its own unique fucking beautiful thing and I think it's an incredible game. I love it. I like it better than Galaxy. I like it better than Galaxy 2. I love me and Michelle played through a ton of it and just had a like great time. I think it's like a meticulous video game. I can't, there's nothing bad I can say about it. I don't think there's anything bad about that game. I just I adore it. I think it looks beautiful and I can't wait to buy it again. Um Okay. Next. Jesus. Oh, this is tough. <sighs> uh, 
Um, someone asking for my take on Hotline Miami 2. Not as well designed as 1, but an absolutely killer soundtrack. This is tough. This is really tough. Okay. I think at this point, I can get rid of Super Metroid. Um, I'm guessing this is also going to be a very unpopular choice. But look, I love this game. I, I think it's fucking brilliant. Um... It has this feeling of just really intense, like, just loneliness and being alone on an alien planet. And I think it was one of the first games to ever really nail that feeling. And it's beautiful, and the music's incredible, and, like, the way it all unfolds and play out. It is the blueprint of so much shit that came after it, and I... I love it. But... I think it's so difficult for me to push it past any other game on this list. Like... Because, like, I played through it once, and it took, like, you know, eight hours, and that was it. Uh, will I stream all these games maybe in, like, a hundred years? Um, but, uh, yeah, I can't. It's hard to justify it, but it's kind of what I feel at this point. Incredible game. It is incredible. It's just your terrible list. <laughs> um, where's World of Goo? Uh, I mean, not here, but you do you, you know? Um, okay, let's keep moving. Oh, so difficult. Okay, well, no, I'll read them in a bit. Oh, Otter Slinger has a really interesting question, chat. Where's Psychonauts? Where's Psychonauts on this list? Uh, the song before this was The Equalizer, Not Alone by The Midnight. I said I wouldn't dead zone it. I don't remember saying that. But no, no, you know what? I like Psychonauts. Not enough to be on this list, but it is a Shadow Realm game. No, I'm not gonna dead zone Psychonauts. This isn't a bit. I would never mess with you guys like that. I'm not gonna miss. I'm not gonna dead zone Psychonauts. Okay, back to the decision. Number 44. Okay. I have made my decision. And this is a tough one. I think it's got to be Donkey Kong Country 2. Uh, this was my maybe favorite game growing up when I was little. Um, I love the atmosphere of this game. It takes the world of Donkey Kong and makes it like dark and scary and weird. I love Diddy and Dixie as characters. I think they're the most fun Kongs to play as. Um, I think it's way better than Donkey Kong Country 1 and 3. I love it. I think when you compare it to other like... 2D platformers mechanically it doesn't have the depth that like a Super Mario World would have but I do think it also completely outstrips Mario World in terms of atmosphere in terms of music sticker brush symphony is like ultra force dude you're gonna have to accept that I really like Red Dead Redemption 2 um it's it's a really great game but I can also 
I can pretty much make arguments for every other game on this list over it, and so I think I'm going to have to cut it. Cut it. Is, Ultra, is Red Dead Redemption 2 on this list just to make fun of Dad and Sons? If I want to make fun of Dad and Sons, I could do it way easier without that. Not that I would. Well, I'd make fun of George because he's really fun to make fun of. But Matt and Liam are two of the biggest sweethearts I've ever met. So no way. Um, no VR games on this list. I don't have a VR headset. So no, I can't. Oh, <sighs> okay. Oh, okay, I fucking hate this cut. I really hate this cut, okay? But I think the next game I gotta cut is No More Heroes. Um, and this hurts me, chat. This hurts me, but I gotta be honest. I went back and I played the No More Heroes remaster recently, and that game is a lot rougher than I remember. Like, a lot lot rougher and if you're losing your mind at this it's like you should go back and play it and see if you have the same experience but like there's there's like a there's like a, a kind of there's a lot of weird effects in that game that I think worked back then don't work now there's this like hit delay whenever you hit someone and it feels super weird and for all the personality and all the style of no more heroes it's so hard for me to like Hold it up to things like, okay, like, let's look at the games that surround it. Metal Gear Solid 2, Mother 3, Nier, Ocarina of Time, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, fucking all 10 out of 10, like, near flawless games. I just can't let it go further, even though I think I love this game more than a lot of other shit on this list. But I have to be able to justify it somehow. So it goes. And it hurts. It, it, it hurts. I love this game so much. Okay. And you know what? In that same vein, I'm going to cut The Walking Dead Season 1. Um, I think an absolutely revolutionary game for its time. Uh, one of the best stories I've ever experienced in games. The way that game comes together, and like there's a scene in the last episode where it's you and you sitting with someone you've unintentionally wronged. And it is, to me, was some of the most powerful shit I'd ever experienced in a game up until that point. Clementine is the absolute fucking best. I love that little girl. I wanted to protect her. I wanted everything to be okay. I thought they would go one way and they went a complete other way. Beautiful game. Beautiful story. I bet it's aged badly. I bet the tech behind it has is not fun and like there's game breaking bugs in it. But I adored it and i thought like the way lee was such a sweet compelling character and he was really good to control and some of the sh like shocking moments that come in like episode two and episode three were just incredible and i i love that game i have such fond memories of that game it's one of the first games that me and michelle like played together and really like loved together and that was a huge part of it but i also think it's the kind of game that allowed that to happen okay next up Okay, next up, at number 41, is Super Punch-Out. Um, one of the best Super Nintendo games in existence. Um, I think maybe some of like the cultural stereotypes have not aged super great, um, but I think it's like, it's not one of the best boxing games ever made, it's one of the best puzzle games ever made, in that each enemy of that game is a puzzle you have to crack. I would put it slightly above the Wii Punch-Out, even though I love Wii Punch-Out, because I think the feeling of punching people is so much better in Super Punch-Out, and I think the art style 
The animation is much better in the Wii version, but I think the art style is stronger on Super Punch-Out. Fucking fantastic game. If you haven't played it, it's on the SNES Classic, and you should. And just take time and like figure out like all that, all, all that game has to offer, because it is great. Oh, that takes us to the stairway of greatness. We have 40 games left and I'm going to read out some donations. But first, guys, I'm just going to take a little break and I'm just going to get a little food. And I'm going to drink something because I am thirsty and I need a moment to gather my thoughts. Um, okay, I will be back in about five to ten minutes. Thanks so much, guys.
And we're back. So right now it is nearly 1.30 a.m. in Ireland. We have been going for 3 hours and 30 minutes. I've been having a great time. Um, I would say there's been some controversy. There's been some... There's been a little... There's There's been some anguish in the chat, we'll say. Um, there was one really unfortunate point where the chat actually put uh, Shovel Knight, a great game, in the uh, dead zone down here, along with a lot of other legitimately bad games like Shenmue 3, Final Fantasy 15, Mario Odyssey, uh, Gaelic Games, PS2, Crash Bandicoot, Yakuza 7, Shovel Knight, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, and the Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, and I don't think Shovel Knight's that bad. Like, obviously, it's not a good game, but it's not bad like all these other games. Um, but other than that, I think we've been having a really nice time. Um... Um, hi John, how do you feel about Brutal Legends? Uh, never played it. Um, no real thoughts on it. Seems kind of interesting. Okay. We have 40 games to go. And let's just, before we read out some, do actually, you know what? Let's go straight to reading some donations. Um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> we are like $1,000 above our goal. That's fucking insane. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, really not... Did not see that coming, but it like I, I thought we'd hit the goal by just not this soon at all. Um Okay, so from Nature Boy we got twenty dollars. From CMM we got five dollars. Hi, my boyfriend is loving the stream from the girlfriend of the guy who ruined your visits to Insomnia Coffee Shop. Oh no, that was lovely. So basically, um I was recognized in uh Insomnia shop that I sometimes went to and um, no you, you guys were super cool like I, I've I've pretty much never had like a bad experience with people in person like I don't mind when people come up to me I don't mind when they like you know hang out and I do my best to like you know take time when I can and just hang out with people I always remember one of my favorite interactions ever was actually the first fan who ever like recognized me kind of I was selling art prints, and I've told this story on stream before, so sorry for hearing it again. I was selling art prints in an artist sally, and um, this I got talking to this girl about Hunter Hunter, and she was like, um, it's like, oh, who's your favorite character, and all this kind of stuff, and I was just like chatting away to her, and she was like really nice, and then eventually she goes, oh, actually, you know what, you should watch this video, this was like before my face was out there and all that kind of stuff, she's like, you should watch this video called, um, why you should watch Hunter Hunter. It's like 50 minutes long, but it, it's you'd still enjoy it. And I was like, oh, um, I wrote that video because I didn't know how else to respond to it. And she looks at me and her eyes go like really, really wide. And she just goes, you write for Super Eyepatch Wolf? And I think I was just like, uh, yeah. And I just didn't know what else to say. And it was like, it was one of the cutest interactions I think I've ever had with a fan. I've had a lot of weird interactions with fans, but like never negative, just always memorable. I'll put it that way. Anyway, let's read some more donations. Um, Carter Diggs, uh, $10. Uh, Winterly Parsley. Hey man, been a fan for a long time. Saw you at the Promar premiere and was too shy to say hi. Keep up the good work and happy Promar premiere. Oh, you mean the one in Dublin? Yeah, oh here dude, if you see me, just say hi. Like, it, it's cool and I promise it will be like a fun, it, like, <laughs> I promise I won't be like awkward. Like, it will, I will be nice. And um, we have $25 from Foxcade. Well, that can't be right. Uh, I, I think Tiltify might have glitched out or something. Um, you failed to stand for DMC5 um, years ago on Let's Fight a Boss. Now it's time to redeem yourself as a true gamer. Okay, Foxcade, if you're listening to this, if someone even wants to clip this and send it to him, I have one thing to say to you, Fox, okay? Shut the fuck up. Okay, just shut up. Okay, moving on. Um, 
Marlo Kami, ten dollars. Uh, thanks for the stream and everything you do. It wouldn't be possible to consider throwing three houses in the dead zone, right? No, three ho three houses is bad. It's not dead zone bad. Um, anonymous, fifty top five dollars and fifty five cent. Thank you so much. Um, Lucha Ace, ten dollars. Hey John, just want to thank you for supporting a great cause and bringing much needed smiles and laughter when little else was this past year. Much love to you and the rest of Let's Fight a Boss. Uh, Dad Sons Liam, fifty dollars on Arago. Keep on doing uh, super work for charity and those incredible videos. Let's pod again soon. Love you, buddy. Ah, oh, dude, I'm I am down for Bad Dad and Sons. Whenever you guys, I I love being the weird the weird absent uncle of that podcast. Uh, Pixel Paggers. Ten dollars. Thank you for your videos. Your voice is calming my anxiety. Your voice calms my anxiety. Thank you. I doubt this stream is calming anyone's anxiety, but dude, I've been there with anxiety. I know how much it fucking sucks. And so, if the videos do that for you, that's awesome. Mackie, five dollars. Hey, you're cool. I like you. I like you and your videos. Thank you. Uh, Redivision, twenty dollars. Have you ever played Mega Man Legends? Um, do you have enough of my favorite games in the running still that it wouldn't be? Wouldn't be too if it gets dead zoned. Um, I've never played Mega Man Legends, so I can't dead zone it. Um, so you're okay there. That lad who wears. Hi, uh, just yesterday I, I hanged up that copy of Silent Hill 2 that you signed for me in QCon in 2019. I'm so grateful that I got a chance to meet you before COVID happened. Hopefully I and every one of your fans gets a chance to meet you at cons again. Oh, dude, like... The thing that fucking kills me about the pandemic is I just, I want to do cons again. Like, I want to hang out with fans and meet everyone. And it makes me so sad that we can't, you know. That's the best part of this job, honestly. Um, public, uh, love your work. Love that you're doing charity. Uh, the Big Wald, $10. This is a sneak preview of what 2021 GOT will be like. You're the rest of the queen, isn't it? Uh, Len, um... Loving the, stream, loving the stream and your work in general. Also, thanks for supporting a cause like this. Have you ever heard of Plate of Omari yet? It finally came out less than a month ago and I think it would be right up your alley, both as a story and world and horror elements. I know Omari, that's the um, that's the Omocat game. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I will probably play it soon. Um, okay, I think we are good to go back. Guys, just a reminder, we are collecting money for the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Um, I feel like, I said this at the start of the stream, but throwing like something like, you know, talk of suicide and stuff into a stream as silly as one was ranking video games, I feel, you know, that could be seen as kind of a weird move, but I, part of this, part of the idea behind this stream is I wanted to like, maybe just, you know, destigmatize that stuff a little, because I feel like the fact that suicide is such a taboo is also a big part of it just not being talked about, and I think that fucking sucks, because like, you know, I have... You know, friends that have been suicidal, kind of, I've known people who kind of, you know, have lost their lives to it. And it's a really deeply sad and tragic thing. And I just wanted to do a little something to kind of, I guess, help with that, even in a really, really tiny way. So, like, the donations are really appreciated. They do really mean something. And, like, the American Suicide Foundation, the Prevention Foundation is, like, it's a really cool cause and it's absolutely worth donating to. So even if you can just donate a little bit, it's that's a really fucking cool thing to do. But look, if not, don't worry about it. Enjoy the stream. Like, this is also about just us having a good time. Okay. Let's tidy up this list real quick. Um... Oh, I think I know what I gotta cut soon, and it hurts, but I gotta do it. Okay. Um, for the donation link, you can find it in the... You can find it in the bottom, just below the stream, or you can just type um, exclamation points donation, donation, and that should do it as well. Um, 
Pup, uh, Pup Tart Kitty X. I, I'll put a playable version of this playlist up on my Spotify, which I think is linked at the bottom of most of my videos. Okay. Hell yeah. The first entry into the stairway of greatness. Oh my god, these are all fucking killers. These are all like the best games ever, according to me. Um. It's got it's gotta be Streets of Rage 2. I fucking love that game so much, but it's an hour and a half like scrolling beat em up. And you know, if you want to talk about, like, games that have, like, style and, like, just, like, fucking, like, a kind of swagger to them, Streets of Rage 2 is one of the earliest and best that really meant something. It was this fucking Sega Genesis game that had, like, house music in it, that had club music, that was going out into culture and taking the grimiest, like, edgiest shit people could find and actually turning into its own thing with Yuzo Kushiro's, Yuzo Kushiro's soundtrack. And it's beautiful. It's such a fantastic game. It's only, the only way I can find fault with it is looking at the other games on this list and comparing it to them. <sighs> yeah, what was it that said in Streets of Rage 2? The police cannot help you, only your fists or something like that. Proved to be true, proved to be true. Um, okay, with that... Excuse me. Oh, this is such a good song. Um, this is from a game called um, One Shot, which I have not played, but I really, I have really gotta like, I I have to play it. Like it's it's been recommended to me a bunch, and if it has music in it like this, I think it would be really fucking good. Okay, this next one hurts me so much, but I feel like I have to do it because I just can't find a meaningful reason why it can compare to any of these games. I am cutting Shenmue 2. Now look, I am aware of what Shenmue has become over time and I know in hindsight how fucking silly those games look. But you have to understand, when those games came out, they were a fucking new world for video games. They were a whole new thing. And, like, it's so easy to go now and look at the near nonsensical game design and, like, the laughable voice acting. But the reason that stuff is so fucking broken is because there was nothing even attempting anything close to that when Shenmue came out. And to me, Shenmue 2 is the much better game between Shenmue 1 and 2. And, you know... <coughs> For as much as, like, I'll laugh at it when we do the Let's Plays and Let's Fight a Boss, when I think of, like, shit that just had me mesmerized in front of, like, a gaming console, Shenmue 2 is it. I cannot find very many arguments when it when there's a list, like, Link to the Past, Mother 3, um, Red Dead, Resident Evil 4. Like, it's just not gonna happen. But in its own way, I think Shenmue 1 and 2 are still beautiful games, and I still think they're worthwhile. But I gotta leave it here. You sure love Shenmue 3. Boy, do I. Um, why is Bloke Pokemon Blue still here? Because it's one of the greatest, most influential games of all time. You fucking heathens! Okay? That's why it's still here. 
Okay, moving on. Okay. Next up for the cut, I think it's got to be Toho 8 Imperishable Night. Um, Toho 8 is about as perfect a game as there is on this list. Um, I'm not like huge into Toho, but I'm huge into Imperishable Night. I think it's such a fucking glorious mix of really cool visuals and amazing soundtrack. It's like a shoot 'em up game. It's like a bullet hell game if you haven't played it. And it's just joyous. And I think out of any game I've ever played, it's like, it's, oh man. It's just like, it is the most flow state inducing game. You know, like you zone out and you just hit that zone and it's incredible. It's so, so good. And I love it. And it's like one of the ones, it hurts so much to cut it, but I just gotta, um, is it not pronounced to who? <laughs> okay, moving on. This is hard. This is hard. Now this is me having to really like devour my babies, but I gotta do it. We gotta get to the end of this. Fuck. Oh, God. Okay, I think I know what I gotta do next. Uh. Oh, this sucks. This is, this is bad. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. Don't make me do this. I gotta cut Nier. Nier is a beautiful game. Um, you know that, like, old cliche of, like, more than the sum of its parts? I think in a lot of ways... Nier, and I'm talking about original Nier, I'm not talking about Tomata. I think Nier, I know, I know, I know, but like, Nier is such a beautiful story and it does do so much interesting shit with its gameplay. I also think a lot of its gameplay is kind of bad and like the pacing of some of the dungeons is really bad and it's just, it's just gotta go. And it's hard because, like, to me, it's the it's the it's the game that did like the whole flip perspective thing. Now you see things from the enemy's point of view. It did that better than any game I've ever experienced, and I adore it. And that party might be my favorite like party of an RPG. You know, you got Kaine, you got all the other guys, Emil. It's just beautiful. There's so many fantastic cutscenes with like those characters forming relationships. And it's fantastic. It is so good. Maybe it deserves to go higher. It's really hard for me to say. But just every other game on this list is just so fucking solid at this point. I think it just, it has to end here. Oh. Emil, best boy. Boy, is he. Okay. Oh, I just felt myself waver on Gitaru, man. That's not, that's not fun. That's not fair. Um, do you recommend tracking down the original or playing replicants? Personally, I am not a big fan of Brother Nier. I feel like that, that's, that dynamic gets a little kind of pandery in a way I'm not into when it's Brother Nier. But I th it, to me, it makes more sense thematically as Father Nier. But, um each to their own on that one, like, people's mileage is gonna vary. Let's see.
Okay, next cut is going to be WWE No Mercy, the greatest wrestling game of all time. A fucking defining cultural moment in my teenage years. I poured like dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into No Mercy. It was fucking brilliant. They have never made, since then, they have never made a WWE game that's even come close to it. The amount of times, so me and my friend, right? Our Saturday night was we would order pizza, we would set up a pay-per-view and watch the AI wrestlers fight and commentate over it. And I swear to God, watching those matches is some of the happiest I have ever been. It is such a great game. This is, I, don't, I have nothing bad to say about it. It's, it's kind of perfect in a lot of ways. It, I'm not going to talk about how it's aged. I'm not going to talk about any of that. It is a beautiful game. I refuse to say a bad word about it. It was real cozy. It was real cozy. And like, I, I've lost touch with that guy now. Like that friend I used to do that with. We don't hang out anymore. Just, he kind of disappeared. And it's weird because he, that's one of those games where like, it's linked to a person for me. And when I think that happens, I think that's really like special and powerful. You know what I mean? And I think that's, and like, no, it's not something that belongs in an objective analysis of a game but like when the fuck have anything i ever done come close to objective you know i don't try and do that and i like i don't care that is a be that like i really value those memories and those memories would not exist without that game and um, putting this above near feels a bit unhinged but i get the personal attachment <laughs> yeah okay I, I i get that reminds me of your sonic video okay real talk the guy I just talked about is the guy who inspired that character in the Sonic video. Um, his name is not... I can't remember what I called him in the Sonic video. J Jake? His name is not Jake. But, like, that was all based on, like, real shit. I just, I just like, changed things. Hey, Casey, how's it going? Good to have you here. Yeah, no, there, there's some deep... Lo yeah, it's Jake. That guy was Jake. His name's not Jake, but that's who Jake was based on. Um, there's some deep lore for everybody. Yep, that was... That was a real person. He smoked and everything. He was like... He was like, kind of like a... He was like my kind of edgier friend who was into a lot of bad shit that I shouldn't have been into. And he would get me in a lot of trouble, but... He, you know, he had his own shit going on and kind of, as we grew up, his kind of life went away and my life went away and, like, we just didn't belong in the same world anymore. And it's kind of sad, but, I mean, you know, when a, relation when a relationship like that ends and you're sad about it, you know it was worthwhile, so. That's good, I think. Anyway, video games. Um, wait, did the I miss you thing actually happen? No, that did not happen. Uh, unfortunately, there was no happy ending to the real life story. John, you sounded like you were in love with that person in the Sonic video. I mean, yeah, I did. Um, okay, I think next it's gotta be Guitaru Man, and I love Guitaru Man so fucking much. It is my favorite rhythm game ever, it is one of my favorite games ever. It is so weird and out there. They did something that a lot of people don't do, and... I really wish they did more of it, you know? It's basically they found a really weird artist and they built an entire game around his art style, you know? And I, God, I love that game. But um, I think mechanically it's very simple and it's a game that sells itself on its presentation and like, it does some cool stuff with gameplay, but it's like, it's, it was, 
just like a real I think it was like the moment I realized I liked weird fucking art. Let's actually pull up a little video of it because it's worth looking at. How oh my god, someone uploaded 4K Guitar Man. Oh god, 4K Guitar Man so beautiful. Okay, let me let me get the right one here. So this is Gitaru Man. This is where you fight a bunch of aliens. Hang on, I'm gonna pause the music so we can listen to it for a sec. Oh my god, that game looks so good in 4K. It was such a hard game, but it was great. One of the best games of all time, Jim Sterling agrees. All the songs are this good as well. Like every... Uh, let's let's get to the harmony at the end. It's so sick. Are you telling me that this does not elicit great joy in you? Are you do you not feel like you are witnessing something absolutely beautiful in Guitaru Man? There's a boss later on in Guitaru Man called the Sambone Trio, and I must have fought them like a hundred times or something, and when I finally beat them, I like punched the air so hard. Uh, someone was asking for the name of this song, it's Crystal Heart by Ghost Data. Okay, 34. Whew. Okay. Okay. I think I know what's gotta go now. This is going to set people off. I don't care. Okay. At number 33. No, okay, no, no. That was the wrong choice. I'm gonna try again. Public loser, I see devotion. Where can you find that game? You cannot, unfortunately. And it sucks, but you just can't find like it came out and it got pulled down again. Um Oh mm. You can pirate it, like, which, I'd say if you're gonna pirate it, at least pick up some of Red Candle's other games as well, because they are a small studio, and I'm really worried that, like, they, um, I'm really worried what happened with Devotion did them very serious damage, because, like, they're not, like, it's a couple of people, like, I've talked to them, I've chatted to them, and they're really nice, and so, like, I, I can't, you know, publicly recommend pirating it, but I also accept there's no other way you can play it. But if that's the route you go down, like, buy some of their other games. Like, find a way to support them, because they are super, super worth it. And Detention is also excellent. Um... Mm. 
Oh, this is so hard, guys. This is so difficult. Okay. I think I know what I gotta cut. And this is gonna upset people. But at number 34... It's Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is a fucking fantastic game. It is like one of the closest a video game has ever come to being like an amazing action game, action film. That in itself is a problem because why I don't have a problem with Resident Evil 4 at all, I love it. It was the moment to me that Resident Evil stopped being Resident Evil and it started to stop being something like really quite like scary and frightening and like really hitting on some shit to being it is infinitely replayable you're absolutely right i also think it's the moment that like one of my favorite series in existence really started to not be itself and like five six seven i i don't like those games you know i just and that's a bummer like it really it bums me out that it's like that but it's true Nope, Ori after Ori is still Ori. I'm not saying like it's not Resident Evil, but to me, that's like that that is kind of like what it is, you know? And it sucks, but I think compared to what we have left in this list, I gotta cut something, and I think it has to be Resident Evil. And I think the next couple of cuts, people are gonna be so mad. Um But yeah. Okay, let's see what else we got. Sand Noodle Online, a How Ori 4 Changed Resident Evil video would be wild. You see, I feel like that's really like there's really that that's I'd see that's kind of very like worn very well worn territory, and I don't know if I could come up with like an interesting enough angle to make a video like that worthwhile. Uh Sorry there. Oh, things got a little... Um, okay, next game. Like, to me, it's the old school Resident Evil games that I really love, and Ori 4 was the first step away from that, but I can't discount, like, what a fucking amazing game it is. Like, I remember, I always remember, like, when I was, um... When I was, like... Like, graduating from high school, I went out camping with all these guys, like, in the middle of the woods. And these were all, like, my old kind of classmates and stuff. And at about four in the morning, I remember, like, we were all hanging out. And I remember just realizing, man, I don't actually like these guys that much. You know what I mean? And so I walked home. I walked three hours home in, like, the freezing cold morning. And I took a bus into town. And I bought Resident Evil 4 and End of Evangelion. And, um... Just a DVD of End of Evangelion at Resident Evil 4. That was the best summer I ever had. I just played through it over and over, and I played it with my little cousins, and it was just fucking incredible. And I really, really value that. Um, yeah, that would be my pick for that. Okay, moving on. We still got we still got some places to go. Okay. Next cut. This one's been hanging on for a long time for me. This is going to make people super mad. I am cutting Half-Life. Um, original Half-Life, incredible game. Really, really good. Just casually walking through arrows because you don't fuck with them. Yeah, I was just done. Um, <laughs> some people are like, yeah! And some people are like, no! Um, 
Half-Life obviously can't deny, like, I think what's so special about Half-Life, it, it emerged in this conversation when everyone was talking about, like, Unreal Tournament and Quake, and everyone was like, which is going to be the winner of the shooters? And then Half-Life comes along and made everything else look fucking obsolete in a day, and that was incredible. Um, it's a, it's maybe one of the most important games on this list. In terms of my personal feelings towards it, I love it. I spent a lot of time playing it as a teenager. I really did not like Half-Life 2, and the series ended up not meaning a lot to me after that. Half-Life 2 ranks way... See, I don't even rank Half-Life 2. I don't like it. In fact, if you guys want to talk about Half-Life 2... We can talk about Half-Life 2, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's somewhere somewhere you guys want to go. <laughs> no, I'm not going to dead zone Half-Life 2, but I just, I think that game gets a lot of credit for inventing, inventing seesaw puzzles and games, and honestly, just who gives a shit. But um, Half-Life 1, I felt like, when you look at the advancements that made, it's way more significant in several ways. But yeah, anyway, that's my very hot take on Half-Life. So we're going to move past that, we're going to just keep going. Oh. Okay, next up, Secret of Mana. Um, absolute childhood classic of a game for me. Um, mechanically, it's not as sophisticated or deep as so many other games on this list. And its story isn't even that good for an RPG. The characters are barely written. But it just has this undeniable fucking X factor. I just don't think you can take away from it. You know, it's like, it's just this weird, like, perfect combination of visuals and sound that really, like, when I was a kid, like, genuinely took me into another world. And I just fucking love it, you know? Actually, let's... I want, I want to get some Secret of Mana visuals up on screen and I want to play some music because people need to understand... Now, where are we going here? Pause this real quick. Listen to that shit on a Super Nintendo sound chip. Like, there was something so sad and lonely about this music, but like so ethereal as well. Like, Maiden Abyss always reminded me of this music. And then, like, when you see that layered on top of, like, um, I'll just pull up some gameplay super quick. Is this a shitty rip of it? You can't really tell there. This isn't a great quality video, but it just had some of the most charming pixel art in, like, the whole thing. Nero's got a really fantastic video on Secret of Mana, which I'd check out. But yeah, it's gotta go. It's gotta go. There's no two ways about it. <sighs> okay. Number 31. Okay. Whew. 
Bioshock did not make the top 100. I, I I wouldn't have even put Bioshock in the Shadow Realm. Not bad enough for the Dead Zone, but not good enough for the Shadow Realm. <laughs> this is like Sand Noodle Online. This is like watching Giant Bomb Game of the Year, but it's only John fighting the various versions of himself. Oh, it's, that's what it feels like, though. It's so difficult. Um, and we still have, like, we're, st we're, we're coming up to the hardest part. Okay, okay. I have a. Oh, okay, I know what it is. But he hear me out with this one, okay? Just hear me out, okay? The next cut is going to be... <sighs> Super Smash Brothers for the Switch. Um, now, let me explain, okay? I think if you sum up Smash Bros. as a series, and all the games that Smash Brothers have had, you get, like, my favorite... Maybe one... Maybe my favorite series ever. Just something fucking brilliant. I feel like at this point, it's impossible to boil that down into one game. Like, I love Smash Bros. Switch. I've played maybe 60 hours of it, and like, I feel like this game could easily be Melee. Hey, like, this game could be Brawl. Like, I played so much Brawl. But like, this is the ranking of the 100 best games of all time for me, not the best series. And so I feel like I... I have to... It has to be that. It has to be Super Smash Bros. for Switch. I hope that makes sense. Because, like, it's more that just... I think Smash, like, Smash Bros. Switch is my favorite version of Smash. But, like, to really to really get across why I'd love Smash, we'd have to talk about the whole series as one, rather than just, like, the one this one game. And so, for that reason, I think it has to go. Ooh. Okay. Okay. We are now moving into the Ascension of the Super Beasts, the top 30 games. But before we do, let's read some donations. Um. Um, Koznagi, any thoughts? Um, any thoughts of doing an anime top 100 next? I'm sure you'll be able to shatter my hopes and dreams in the future. You see, if I did and if I did a top 100 anime of all time, it would like it would set off like riots in the anime community. People would make videos about it. Everyone would get so angry about it because that's what anime people do, and it just does not sound like a good time to me. I don't think. And also. This is exhausting. I am, like, dying trying to make this list. Like, I would, like, if you guys, like, obviously people are going to look at my list and be like, well, I don't agree with that, and that's fine. But I would really challenge you guys, like, make your own list and see what it feels like when you have to make these just impossible decisions about games you love so much. Like, it is, it is exhausting. It's fun, but, it, like, it is tiring. Um... Beef Beefsteak Entertainer, $50. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, Depression is serious. If anyone reading this thinks they need help, reach out. Also, don't you dare call Final Fantasy VII a better game than Chrono Trigger. If Final Fantasy VII is an infinitely better game than Chrono Trigger, dude. I appreciate your generous donation. But come on. Come on. Like, are we going to talk? Are we going to talk? Um. Okay. Okay. Let's get to it. This feels like good, serious music for what is going to be a very rough 30 games left. It's it's 2 a.m. over here. I want to be finished by 3 a.m. so I can go to bed. I will do my best. This is going to be difficult. Um, 
Uh, so guys, just a reminder, again, we are raising money for the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. We have already smashed our goal, which is awesome. But if you want to donate, you can type exclamation point donate in the chat. Or if you just go down below the screen or in the replied tweet of this, you will see like uh, the donation link. Okay, let's do this. Mm. Okay, next up, I think it's got to be... Okay, I think the next one is going to be Resident Evil Remake. Um, to me, just the flat out best survival horror game that's ever been made. Um, a just fucking staggering achievement. I think it still looks beautiful, especially in like the remake of the remake, the remaster of the remake, whatever you want to call it. Um, an incredible step forward for games, I thought. And like, it just took so much of what made that like what took so much of what made Resident Evil amazing and just pushed it even further and it pushed it honestly to a height I don't think any survival horror game Resident Evil or otherwise has come close to since and I I want something to dethrone it but I think that is the best survival horror game there is um I fucking adore it and it's landing at number 30 which at this point we are talking millimeters between these games but yeah Next, I'm going to go for Bayonetta 2. Um, my favorite character action game ever. I love it. It's a coin toss between this and Bayonetta, but I just love this game so much. Um, I think, like, the cutscenes, Bayonetta's attitude, it all comes, like, through, to me, better than it did in the first game. I think there's... Um, there's like an argument to be made that Bayonetta 1 is a much deeper game and in some ways kind of better designed, but I think just the flair of 2 is what pushes it over the edge to me. Wait! Devil May Cry 5 is still here, isn't it? Oh my god, I forgot about that. Hold the phone, hold the phone. No, no, I love Devil May Cry 5, but it's not better than Bayonetta 2. Hold the phone. Devil May Cry 5, number 29. Bay Guys, you gotta, you gotta cut me some slack here. It's 2 a.m. I've been streaming this for 4 hours and 20 minutes. My brain's going a little bit, but that, that feels good for me. That feels good. <laughs> Stop the vote. No way. Whoa. Look, guys, I got, like, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I think Bayonetta 2 is a better action game, Devil May Cry 5, by, like, that much, by that much, but I think it is. Look, that's the only time that's happened, okay? That's the only time, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Okay. Okay, why do I think that De Bayonetta 2 is a better, like, is a better character action game than Devil May Cry 5? Um, okay. To me, Devil May Cry 5 is Bloody Palace. I think the rest of that game is good. I think Bloody Palace is where it's at. It's where it teaches you to play that game. You can get through all of Devil May Cry 5 on normal without really knowing how to play that game. I think the hidden depths of Devil May Cry 5 only come out in Bloody Palace. To me... Bayonetta 2 not only has a more varied and exciting campaign, it also teaches you how to play it better to the point that you feel like a fucking ninja playing Bayonetta 2, even if you're not playing it at its highest difficulties. To me, that feeling with Devil May Cry 5 does not come across until you are like floor 60 of Bloody Palace and moving upwards. Um, no DMC3, I think DMC Devil May Cry 5 is the better experience.
But people have always played DMC5 for the combo outside the story. I don't see how that makes any difference to what we were just talking about. Um, yeah, that would be my justification. I think the campaign in Bayonetta 2 is a lot better. And, like, that's a huge part of it for me. If people want to disagree with that, that's fine. But, yeah, that would be where I have to go. And, yeah, the Virgil DLC is amazing. See, this sucks because I love Devil May Cry 5. It's made it into my top 30 games ever. And I know, like, it seems to be, like, um, I know I know people, I know it seems like I'm nearly shit-talking it, but it's an incredible game as well. Like, I love it, but I don't think it's as good as Bayonetta 2. I still, Bay to me, Bayonetta 2 is still, like, the cre like the queen of character action. Okay. Next game. Pass, Majora's Mask. Okay, next up is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Um, Street Fighter Alpha 3 was the game that got me into fighting games. It was the game that got me into like anime it was a massively influential piece of art from like where my life would head um it's still to me one of the most beautiful art styles of any fighting game and like there is stuff with more lavish animation but just as like oh god when you see those character portraits and they're so fun and they're so expressive nothing beats that for me and it's so much fun to play still it's kind of broken in a lot of ways the character balance is crazy but jesus christ like air blocking supers and like going down into alpha counters it was so so good and one of the best rosters in fighting games it is there is only one street fighter game i think is better than it and that's i think why it's not going to go further but yeah the Karen laugh. Oh, it's so good with friends. And do you remember earlier I was talking about Garo and like how I never got in a point where I got to play that with friends? For me, Street Fighter Alpha 3 was that game where me and friends were constantly inventing new tech to outdo each other. And it was just so intense and emotional and just fucking brilliant. Oh, that's such a crazy one to call. I love that game. Okay. Now let's keep moving. Mm -mm. Oh. Okay, you know, I think while we're on it, Tekken 5, like, that occupies a very similar place to me. I think Tekken 5 is still hands down the best Tekken. I think it's the, it's a mix of the really cool atmosphere and story from 4. It has one of the best rosters, especially if you factor in the Dark Resurrection characters. Uh, Dragonov is amazing. But, like, those new characters, it was, like, Raven, Asuka, and um, the monk guy, Feng Wei. Or is that virtue? The monk dude, he, those three were so fucking great, and each three had such a strong, like, aesthetic and gameplay style. I played Tekken 5 in arcades all the time. Had one of my best memories ever playing, um, playing, because I played all, I had one of my best memories ever playing arcades in Tekken 5, because I played all the way to the end of the game, and I beat Jin Pachi in the arcade, and I just beat him and I turned around and when I did, there was a crowd around me and they started clapping. And I thought that was the fucking funnest, coolest thing. Um, it's got an amazing soundtrack. If for a PS2 game, it looks absolutely sensational. Really cool stages, really cool art direction. It's such a good game and this feels like the right place for it to be. Um, oh, such a good song. This is, this is good. This is good. We gotta power through. We're getting there. We're getting there. Whew. Okay. Ugh.
Okay, next up, we have Legend of the Mystical Ninja, Ganbore Goemon. Um, at some point, I may have said that this is one of my top five games of all time. Um, in hindsight, maybe that was a little generous. I think top 25 games of all time is more accurate. It is... It is... But top five... I know, okay, okay, okay. It has maybe some difficulty spikes that are a little unjustified, but <laughs> if anyone ever sends, don't ever, anyone, no one's allowed to clip this, don't anyone send this to Wooly, okay? I am forbidding, I am forbidding this to ever reach him, I'll never hear the fucking end of it, okay? Um, I love this game, I love this game so, so much. It has maybe my favorite art style on the Super Nintendo, some of my favorite pixel art. It is absolutely fucking great. And no matter what Willie says, I still love the game design of this game. Hitting stuff feels so good. Those levels are so imaginative and fun. It is a nightmare. It is... <laughs> I run the Goemon subreddit and frankly I'm appalled. Aw, that's really cool. Um, 25 feels like the right place for it. It hurts. It really does to cut it. But yeah, this is the right... This is as far as it goes. Okay, let's keep moving. Jesus, we really... We're getting in it now, guys. Uh, least of the painful, yep. <laughs> it's okay to start dead zoning everything. Okay, I got it. At number 24, we have Wind Waker. I love Wind Waker. I fucking love Wind Waker. I think it is one of the most like imaginative best Zeldas. It is it, it it's much better to me than any of like any Zelda game in the last decade. I absolutely adore it. Its art style is one of the best art style in games. I love the gameplay. It's a little easy, but I still really like it. I liked the Triforce hunting. I thought all that stuff was good. I liked that. But I can't put it ahead of Majora's Mask. I can't put it ahead of Ocarina Time. There's a lot of stuff I can't put it ahead of on this list. And yeah, like there's going to be a lot of Zelda games in these top, but that's how much I love Zelda. And what I'd say is I think each of them really do their own thing. And that's what Wind Waker did. I really respect Nintendo for like making such a... They swerved everyone, you know? It seemed like it was gonna- that Zelda was gonna be this dark, edgy, adult thing, and they went the complete opposite way of it, and fucking killed it. Um, I would- I would say maybe the best last boss fight of any Zelda as well. Just absolutely fucking amazing. Um, may- toss up between that and Ocarina Time's last boss fight. Okay, let's tighten up, let's tighten up. Okay, I, I, I know which is next. <sighs> okay. <laughs> God damn it, just to watch. God damn it. 
Okay. Next up, I am cutting Final Fantasy VI. A lot of people love Final Fantasy VI. A lot of people will tell you it is the best Final Fantasy. I don't think that's a bad opinion, but it ain't mine. I love that game. Especially, like, from, like, a kind of world-building art-wise. The shit they do with Kefka is amazing. The shit they do with your party is amazing. It's a great game. Like, it is a fantastic game. Like, look at how high it has made it on this list, okay? But... I also think there's an element of... For me, it's like, I think a lot of people's favorite Final Fantasies is their first Final Fantasy. And I don't know how true that is, but for me, I came to it after 7 and it just felt like a step backwards. And... <laughs> people are so mad. Um, but yeah, I, lo like, I love the game. I think I don't have the personal connection to it. A lot of people do, and this is as far as it can go for me. Like, I, I think it's an amazing game. I think it's beautiful. I think what it does with the characters is so cool. Some of the stuff doesn't hit home with me in the same way I think it does for some people. And, like, there's no... I like all the characters of Final Fantasy VII a lot. I don't love any of them. And I think that is ultimately where the game doesn't go further for me. Okay, okay. Next game, Dead Rising. I'm guessing for a lot of people, it is bewildering how Dead Rising made it this far. It's an awkward ass game. It's like got like really weird save mechanics. It's so janky to get your head around, but when you do, I still think this game offers just a kind of experience like nothing else does. I think it offers that like perfect B-movie tone. To me, after this, Dead Rising got too zany and completely lost it. But like the psychopath battles, all that kind of stuff, I feel like it captured so beautifully this really cheesy feeling of being trapped in a mall for an outbreak and I had so much fun with it. And I basically got this game at the start of one summer. And I played it over and over and over. And I think I beat it around eight times or something. And I had such an incredible time with it. And like, the way every single weapon you can pick up has like, uh, its own weight and feel. And like, there's so many weird little, like, ways. And then like, you start, basically, it kind of does a Majora's Mask. Not a Majora's Mask thing. You basically have three days to solve the mystery of the shopping mall and you can just run around and do stupid shit the entire time or you can just follow everything and I think it's actually a really fascinating piece of game design and like to be honest with you like there's games with better stories there's games that look better there's games with better characters I don't know that there's many games on this list I think are more fun than Dead Rising like for pure fun factor I fucking love it so much and I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that but I genuinely think it's one of the coolest games I've ever played and still one of my favorites and like still something I could end this stream and just go play and have a great time with um I think it's a weird game because like if you don't like it 
I think there's a lot of good reasons not to like it, but if it clicks with you like it does me, there's really nothing else like it still, and I adore it for that reason. Okay. Okay, Mass Effect 2 at number 21. Um, I adore Mass Effect 2. My favorite Mass Effect game, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um, again, one of my, some of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters ever. I love, I love Garrus. I love everyone on that ship. They're like, well, the, the, what's her name? The bald girl I wasn't crazy about, but she was still fun. Jack, like, in her own way, she, like, made interesting friction with those other characters. I love the story. I love the writing. I still think it's the peak of Mass Effect, and it's interesting. Like, the writing and the dialogue in that game is so good. I always remember the first speech from Mass Effect 3. I remember listening to it and thinking, that's not right. That's not the right tone. And I went and I looked and surely the lead writer from Mass Effect 2 was no longer working on Mass Effect 3. And I just, I knew it. Um, so, yeah. I think... I think the shooting mechanics could be better. I still think it does cool things with shooting mechanics. Um, God, people are so mad over Red Dead. Um, should one start with... Um, should one start with two? I actually started with two, and I find that found that a really fine way to get into the series. So yeah, I think you can. Garrus, Tally, Grunt, and Legion were my favorites. Like exactly. Like even those, just those guys were fucking brilliant. Okay, we're at the top twenty. We're just gonna keep rolling here. We are in the battle on heavenly ground. This is it. Okay, guys, just a reminder, we are we are collecting money for the American um, American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. You can find links in the in the just below the stream. There's a link there. You can type uh, exclamation point donate, and that'll give you a link. Um, and yeah, it's for a good cause. So if you can, it you, 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 it'd be great to, for you to donate. Oh, I'm losing my words. Okay, top twenty games. Here we go. Jesus, this is tough. Okay. Okay. For me, the next game is Majora's Mask. Um, what a weird, broken, special game. The weirdest Zelda game. So fucking out there and interesting. I can't believe that what is basically an asset reuse of Ocarina of Time could be such a profoundly weird and interesting experience. Its mechanics have been talked to death. It's like... The idea, it's so dark and nihilistic, but then, like, so hopeful as well. And, like, just that whole town and learning to know that town and, like, the different intricacies of how they interact with each other. It's fucking brilliant. Um... It's about death, yeah, like, it is a Legend of Zelda game about death and dying and the inevitability and learning to accept that. It is a fucking exceptional game. I think there's, like, a few rough edges, nothing that I feel like is even worth bringing up, but it stands at number 20, which brings us to number 19. <sighs>
Okay. At number 19, I think it's got to be Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Fucking incredible game. One of the best RPGs of all time. And it's so difficult, like, it's so difficult explaining that to people who haven't played it. But, like, the writing in that game is so sharp. The art direction is amazing. Um, it's just such a fantastic fucking game. And, like, the battle system is one of the cleverest and tightest I've ever played. And, oh, man... I think the only thing that keeps it from going higher to me is I think nearly everything else on this list I either had that like a massive like personal a connection to or like change the games industries and like I have a hugely like personal connection to the Thousand Year Door in that I think it's really really good guys like chill about Red Dead I really like that game and you know you can't be shocked every time I don't pick it. It's not going to make, like, Red Dead won't be number one. Chill. But it is going to be, like, high, okay? Um. But, um. Yeah. I think, yeah, like, with the thing about Thousand Mirror Door is it tells a nice story. But, like, it's not a story that I feel ever really, like, emotionally hit me the way, like, the best RPGs kind of can do. Um. And I think that's the only thing it's missing. I think, like, if you put, like, a really emotionally impactful story in there, we'd be talking, like, top five. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked to see it out this early. But, yeah, it's that kind of thing. When I look at what's left, <coughs> it is difficult to really justify it ahead of them. Okay. Guys, I'm just going to grab one more Coke to keep me awake for these last, these last couple of cuts. So back in a sec. Okay, we're back. <sighs> so I see people like kind of leaving like kind of kind of various opinions about Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, this is, Red Dead 2 is, like, an interesting one for me, because I feel like I'm kind of with you on a lot of them, right? Because, like, I played Red Dead 2, and I played it for, like, 20 hours, and I put it down, and I was like, okay, it seems pretty cool, but, like, I think that's enough for me. I think I might just go read the Wikipedia, but, um... Then afterwards, I, took, I was taking some time off from YouTube and I was kind of in a shitty place and I sat down and I just spent every day playing Red Dead Redemption 2. And that's kind of like the ideal way to play that game, you know? And I got so invested in that world and characters and just the story of like... How that dude just fucking fell apart and like what it said about death and legacy and like, you know like familial like familial bonds i thought it was just fucking amazing but i'm gonna talk about more than that when we cut it and that's not going to be now because i think the next game we gotta cut yeah i i genuinely think he's one of the arthur is one of the best protagonists in any game but i'll, I'll talk about that more in a sec um Okay, you know what? Next, I'm cutting Pokemon Blue. Um, I know kind of people are like, how did that make it this far? And with Pokemon Blue, like what you got to understand is I was there on the ground level when Pokemon wasn't a thing. Pokemon wasn't, con there, there was no convention for Pokemon. You could not understand it. You couldn't say it was like Pokemon games because Pokemon games didn't exist. 
And then me and my dad wandered into a shop called Mr. Calculator in Dublin, Ireland. And by some miracle, they had an American import of it. And I downloaded it and I took it home. And I swear to God, that game hypnotized me harder than I've ever been hypnotized by any game. It was fucking amazing. And I remember just raising my Bulbasaur. Like, I didn't know what my Bulbasaur was going to evolve into. Can you imagine how exciting that is? How, how exciting that was, you know? And it was such an amazing experience. Um, and then, like... I also remember, like, I hung out with these kids. I know a lot of these stories kind of end with me being like, and then I never saw that person again. But I was hanging out with these kids I didn't like because they were kind of mean and shitty. And at some point, I was like, I'd be having a way better time if I went indoors and played Pokemon. And I did. And I never saw those kids. I stopped hanging out with those kids because Pokemon was better than them. Pokemon Blue was better than some people I know. That's how good it is. Um, incredible game, completely groundbreaking, started one of the biggest media franchises on the earth. I adore it. Okay. Okay, next up, Super Mario World. Um, uh -huh. No, that's not what I want. Super Mario World, like, what, I don't even know what you can say about this game, but I can tell you, like, going from Super Mario Land 3 to Super Mario World was the most insane shit. Like, m my, like, looking into a screen playing Super Mario World was like looking at fucking magic. That's what you felt like you were seeing when you, when, like, it first came out. Um, it's so fun, it's so weird, it's so creative, it is still one of the best games ever. I don't think it's aged a single day. Again, I think maybe some of the games left on this list have more of an emotional punch for me than that game. But I still adore it, and I'd still just, like, play it for hours. It's still fucking great. Uh, a bad proof of concept, overrated, my own experience. You see, it could be, but it's always hard to say unless you were there for a game that monumental that did shit that differently so you could say that like different platformers might be better than it now but man at the time like it was just so good okay moving on Ooh, this is so tough Okay, for now, it's got to be Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution. Uh, the best 3D fighting game in existence. Um, I love this game so much. Uh, one of the best rosters ever. It's just pure fighting game perfection. But the real X factor of this game, for me, is it's single player. This had a gigantic single player mode with all these AI control fighters. So you would wander around to different arcades and you would fight these AI controlled characters that all played like their own individual characters and fighting style. And I always remember there was this one fucking character and he was called Lee Bai and I could never beat him. And then like, I went through the whole game with him demolishing me every time. And then in the like very last stage of the game, I entered a tournament in the biggest arcade there was. And in the finals, it was me and Lee Bai. And I was so pissed because I knew I wasn't going to beat him. And like, it took ages to get there and I was going to have to get here all over again. And then in like one of the most clutch matches I've ever had, I beat this AI controlled opponent. And it was just elative. It was the best feeling and 
it was incredible. It added Go, one of my favorite fighting game characters ever, and it had some of the best for the time custom like customization options in any game. Um, beautiful game. In some ways, I don't think I don't think fighting games have ever had as good single player options as that did. And I wish I wish they would go back and take influence from it because it's incredible, guys. Top fifteen. Here we are. We're doing it. We're nearly there. Yu Yu Hakusho 420, you're noticed. Okay. Whew. Getting down to it. I actually thought it would go further, but I think at this point, I gotta drop Devotion. Yep. Devotion. Uh, Devotion is the second best horror game I've ever played. Um, it's from a tiny Taiwanese studio. It feels like it has the like production quality of like a AAA film. Um, I have an entire video on Devotion, so I'm not going to say too much about it. But I think it is a profoundly sad and frightening game about how... About how when we're at our lowest and most desperate, the most insidious aspects of like society can just creep into us and ruin everything. And I think it's, it's like, it's a real fucking, like it's supernatural and it's weird and it's spooky, but it's all, it's all based on real shit. Like, and that's what I love from horror, you know, when it, when it, when it takes like this real life stuff and takes it to this whole other level. And like Devotion isn't just one of the best horror games I've ever played. It's one of the best pieces of horror I've experienced. Games, movies, books, anything. It's just fucking beautiful. And like I hate saying this, it is a piece of art. Like it is, it is, if anyone is not done with that tired ass argument of where games are, are there, whether games are art or not, Devotion is the kind of game I would show them. Will anyone ever be able to play it? God, I fucking hope so. But, um, okay. Devotion. I actually thought Devotion would go higher. I'm kind of sad that it hasn't, but yeah. Okay. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. It is nearly 3 a.m. in Ireland. I haven't played Disco Elysium properly. I'm really looking forward to it, though. Okay, next up. Next up is gonna be Red Dead Redemption 2. Um. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game with so many fucking problems. It is so awkward. The shooting is so repetitive. Everything takes so long and it drags out and the game itself is way too fucking long. There's like any number of things and like the mission structure. This should be a game I feel like about like being able to approach different problems your own way. You know, you should be able to do all that shit in it, but every mission ha feels like it has this linear ass, like, do it this exact way, and if you go outside this way, you'll fail, and all that kind of stuff. But despite all of that, I still think it is an absolutely incredible game, and one of the best stories games have ever fucking told. And I feel like there's so much in there about, like, non-biological families and the legacy you leave behind in a way that is just so fucking profound. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, you know? I am... Um... And, like, oh, there's that one scene between um, Arthur and I think it's Jesse? It's it's the girl who joins your group. Her name escapes me right now. But he has that line where he's like, We're more. 
ghosts and people and like it's so fucking like you know when you're just trapped in a particular mindset and you're obsessed with the way things were like four or five years ago or whatever it is a game about that it is a game about being just trapped by your past and wanting to move on and wanting to escape but completely being unable to and that is so fucking tragic and beautiful that yeah i get it i get that there's so many problems in that game but like when it tells a story that fucking good I have no choice but to say it's like the 14th best game of all time, you know? And like, it does it through the gameplay, you know? Like, it does it like, you're just walking around, you spend like 30, 40 hours of Ar uh, as Arthur and your body is fine, you're okay. And next thing you fall off your fucking horse on this mission and the set, and like, how strongly does that communicate the idea of sickness that there is something really fucked in your body and you're going to die? Nothing has ever made me feel like that before. And so, like, I get it. It's a controversial game. It's divisive. But the shit it does well, it does better than maybe anything else. And that would be my justification behind putting this at number 14. Yeah, a bad proof of concept. The highest highs eclipse the lowest lows for you every single time. <sighs> okay. Number 13, Lisa the Painful. Um I love Lisa the Painful. I love it so much. Um, I feel like a lot of what I just said about Red Dead Redemption 2 could be applied to Lisa. Except it takes six hours. And it is... So, like... It is one of the most tragic games I've ever played. This absolutely made me cry, this game. Like, it was... Um, it's again about a deeply broken broken person. You're playing as this man who's addicted to drugs and then he finds, I don't want to say too much because I really just want people to play it, but um, he finds a new reason to live and then things go wrong and it is just a game about being trapped, like just being trapped in this violent, cruel world. There are no right decisions. Everything is always against you and it's fucking beautiful. You know, it, like it, it is just a game where there is always bad there's bad things always happen and you just have to go with it and it's incredible um there's parts of it that are rough the battle system's a little rough some of like the way you navigate the world kind of sucks the lows of the game are so far e e eclipsed by its highs i yeah please please go play that game Whew. oh fucking brilliant song Totally, it is one of the most underrated games. Um, Usof, Lisa and Outer Wilds are my favorite indie games. I wish I got Outer Wilds. Like, I respect it, but I just have no... I played it for like four hours, could not get into it at all. I first heard the song in an Ava AMV. Wow, um, this is... Uh, <laughs> I will. Tr it's dollar sign suicide boys dollar sign. Um, I will leave. I I will leave this in the. Okay, top twelve. Which two games aren't going to make it into the top ten? This is fucking tough.
Okay. At number 12, it's Super Mario 64. I mean, Super Mario 64 is an incredible game. It's still an incredible game. And it's was the first proper, legitimate, well-playing 3D game. And that's fucking amazing. And like, even back then, I know I talked about earlier about like Super Mario World being like looking into another world, like into a new reality. Super Mario 64 was like that times 10. It, it just destroyed my brain trying to figure out what that game was. But when you got it and you realized it was actually a fucking amazing game that played good, Nintendo nailed it like the first try and in doing so fucking changed video games, you know? Like they changed everything with this one fucking game. There are games that I like better than on this list. I don't know that there is a more important game on this list. I genuinely don't. That's why it's not going further than this, but, yeah. <sighs> Number 11, Link to the Past. Um, I think the moment that the Zelda franchise really ascended to greatness and just became what it is, you know? And I know 11's going to be low for some people, but I have played that game, I cleared it, I'd say, about four or five times and I adore it I'm not get like again it's the same th it's the same thing I know I know everyone's like um it 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 in a lot of ways maybe it deserves to go higher but to me Ocarina of Time is the better game and a more important game and I know not everyone's gonna agree with that but I just that's what I gotta go with oh <sighs> Okay, guys, we have reached the top 10. It is 3 a.m. We are going to finish this. But before we do, I want to read some quick donations here. Um, um, okay. Guys, we have raised $2,700 in like, what, like four hours? That is fucking amazing. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, Taco Waveable, cheers and keep fighting the good fight. Um, Anonymous, $10. Uh, Ed L, $5. Hello, Jam. Um, Dorian Draws. Um, I might be just a little salty about your opinions on Half-Life 2, but your videos has opened up a world with lights and games, movies, animes, and more. I love your work, and I love your heart, because, uh, like, suicide prevention and other organizations, you've helped fundraise for. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, dude. Proof of concept. Um, great stream and great cause. Love the stream. Also, justice for Devil May Cry 5 after you let the inferior Capcom game get ahead and let's fight a boss. Oh, man. Proof of concept. Um, great stream for a great cause. Uh, uh, uh. Um, Naisegi, uh, $3, Catherine, $5, your videos has helped me through some incredibly dark times and it means a lot that you're speaking out about uh, destigmatization discussions around suicide. Thank you so much for hosting this fundraiser and for everything else you do. No problem, Catherine. Uh, Raven, $10, help to support the one true queen. Um, Dan, $20, uh, Red Comet, $10. Okay, that is us up to date on donations. I'd say we got about... 20 to 30 minutes left in this stream and that's gonna do it so guys if you want to get your donations in check below the check below the twitch stream for the link that will take you to it or you can type exclamation point donation um and yeah let's try and raise some more money for a really good cause now the number 10 best game of all time okay chat what do you what do you think it should be?
<تصفيق> اوه We are in the domain of God. We have gone through the gates of acceptance, the mountains of quality, the bridge of killers, the path of the elite, the doorway of the best, the threshold of brilliance, the stairway of greatness, the ascension of the super beast, the battle on heavenly ground to get to the sacred domain of God. We have gone through it all. Now, 10 games left. And at number 10, I think it's got to be Yakuza 0. Um, I fucking adore Yakuza 0. It's... I think, personally, the game I like most from the last generation. Uh, no, it's it's a tough, like, oh, it's tough, it's tough. It is close to my favorite game from the last generation. Top five, are we riot? I don't know, guys. I don't think I can help you with this. I think when I look at the rest of the games on this list, it's Yakuza 0. It's a fucking brilliant game. It is... A just tremendous game. Uh, one of my favorite stories ever. One of the most fun stories ever. Like, just some of the best character writing. Some of the best interactions. Just everything about it. One of the most beautifully presented games ever. Like, one of my problems with Yakuza 7 is I feel like the presentation has slipped so much. And if you go back and watch some Yakuza 0 cutscenes, you'll see what I mean. Like, it's... They have these beautifully rendered 60 frames per second cutscenes. And it makes the game feel so cinematic and fucking meaningful. And it's all these tiny little pieces of, like, detail to all these really subtle interactions between characters. And I feel like you've really lost a lot of that from Yakuza, like Yakuza 7, that makes me sad. But it also, it took Majima, this fucking insane character, and it's like, here's how this well-mannered, low-key Yakuza turns into like, you know, the mad dog. And it was just such an amazing story. And like, at the heart of this game, I really think it's about just being a good person. You know, just doing what's right for the people around you, doing what's right for you know others and it's such a simple message but i thought the way they conveyed it was so powerful in that last scene and i'm not gonna say it is but when you watch that person walk away and you realize the weight of that and what majima is giving up that fucking destroys me every time i could watch that now and i would bawl like a baby and that is the strength of that game like i think it is about doing what is right when what is right is totally fucking impossible and it's incredible <sighs> okay next metal gear solid 2 The number nine best game of all time. <laughs> oh, um, I adore Metal Gear Solid 2. I love it so, so, so much. Um... I'm not, I, I can't, I don't have it in me to really shit talk any game on this list. I'd just be like, I'd just be like pulling at things for the sake of it. Metal Gear Solid 2, I think, um, is, was one of the first times I started to feel like games could do things that other mediums couldn't. When you get to the end of it and it breaks the fourth wall and tells you to turn off your own PlayStation, that was like a profoundly fucked moment for me because I... Well, like, I guess you had, like, the Psychomantis moments from one, but I really feel like the Psychomantis moments were these quirky little bits in that game, 
But the way, like, Metal Gear Solid 2, you get to the end of it and it just fucking breaks and everything is insane. Like, that really messed with me in a way that I just was so fascinated by and loved. And I thought, like, its level of storytelling, its writing, I to me, it was all above anything I'd seen before. And, like, the level of cinematics, I beat it seven or eight times i played it on european extreme and got to the fighter jet and i couldn't get past the fighter jet but it doesn't matter i think that's an amazing game and i haven't gone back and played it in a long time but i really want to i thought the bait and switch with raiden was the biggest fuck you to the fans and i love that stuff people can make like like how ahead of it was it how ahead of that game was its time talking about like memes and all that kind of shit like incredible i think it's very easy to make the argument that metal gear solid 3 is a better game i like 2 better it just it hit home so much harder for me and like the weird meta shit it does i prefer that to like the kind of bond action film stuff of 3 so I, and that's entirely personal preference you know, I'm not making the argument it's the better game, just that it's the better game on this list, and it's way better than Hades. Um, okay, next up. At number At number eight. It's Ocarina of Time. <laughs> oh my god ocarina of time i mean like what else can you say about ocarina of time uh just a fucking profound moment for game design um one of the at the time it was one of the best games ever made it still is i think there's an argument to be made that nintendo the step forward they took with Ocarina of Time, I don't think they've taken as significant a step forward since then, and I think trying to argue they have is an exercise in futility. It took Legend of Zelda, and it brought it into 3D for the first time, and that should have been a fucking disaster. It should have been the worst thing ever, and it wasn't. It was just this... Like, in a lot of ways, one of the first, like... 3D open world games and like you had stuff like Shenmue and Oblivion and stuff that would come later but Ocarina of Time was like okay he, this isn't a level like this isn't a stage this isn't a path for you to clear this is a world go fucking play in it and like that is a profound moment in game design and I still have so little that makes me feel like that did. Like, it was incredible, and I, yeah, I still love that game. Absolutely love that game. The 3DS remake of it is excellent, but yeah, that's the most I could say about it. Just a profound moment in game design. I'm second-guessing myself now. I'm feeling like maybe it should have gone further. But no, Ocarina of Time is where it goes. Okay. Guys, we have seven games left. We have seven games left. Keep those Tiltify donations coming in. We're doing good. We're doing real good. And we have only a little bit left to go. Um, I'm going to link the link in the chat. If anyone wants to donate there, it's in the chat right now. Okay, number seven, 
Dark Souls. Um. So, when I talked about the step forward that Ocarina of Time took, I think the next game that made me feel like that was Dark Souls. And it didn't do it, like, through an open world or, like, through a kind of revolutionary concept like that, but it did it through, I feel like, reshuffling a lot of game design that people took for granted and just creating this brutal fucking reality that just shook, like, what games were to its core. Like, I think, to me, like, the most influential game of last generation is Dark Souls. Like, by, like... Like, the whole Dark Souls with meme, it's like every game, every fucking game, like, from the biggest to the smallest took influence from Dark Souls, and I still think, like, it is beautiful. I think, um, if you want to make the argument that Bloodborne's a better game, I'm not going to argue with you there. I think Bloodborne has several things over Dark Souls, but in terms of, like, the imagination of some of those bosses, like, meeting Great Grey Wolf Sif for the first time... It's fucking crazy, and like, the triumph, when you get to the end of that game, when you fight your way through the nightmares of Dark Souls, and the last boss is an old man in a cave, it's the saddest, most beautiful fucking thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's it's an incredible game. Um, I feel like I can't really say much more about it, because so much has already been said. <sighs> Jesus Christ, we're really down to it now. Okay, yeah, someone just mentioned this in the chat, but, like, moments, like, Sif remembering you, or, like, you beat Sif, this fucking so, like, difficult a boss, and in his last moments, he doesn't try and kill you, he just try and walks away from you. Like, there's that quote from uh, Miyazaki where he's like, um, he wants the monsters of Dark Souls to have, like, a kind of dignity to them. And it's things like that that make that game so special, because, like, these monsters are horrifying, but they're kind of believable as creatures that could exist in this world, and that makes them scarier, but it makes them more real. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, this is so tough. This is fucking impossible. Oh my god, I've I've been through these games so many times in my head and it's like it's like an impossible puzzle. I can't fucking do it.
Okay. I am make I have made my decision. And this is like this is keeping in mind that there is millimeters between these games. I love all these games so much. And if you ask me to like do this list again tomorrow, these could all be in a different order, okay? But this game, the next game I'm cutting is Undertale. I can't wait to see how chat reacts to this. Oh, whoa. Wow, okay. Look, I fucking love Undertale so much. It's just... <sighs> yeah, like, look, I know people are upset, but, like, I literally did a four... Like, I dedicated five weeks of my life to just Undertale. I love this game. I love it so fucking much. I think it is a profoundly beautiful game. I think the thing it says about video games, and I know, like, it's easy to be like, oh, violence is not the right option. I think it does so much more than that, and it's not even, like, it's less even about what it does, but how effectively it does it. The way that game make builds a relationship with the player, gets you fucking invested, I think is incredible. Um, I think it is one, genuinely one of the biggest step forwards for games in terms of, like, philosophy in the longest time, and I wish there were more games like it, you know, I wish more shit did what Undertale did, like, I really adore that game, I think it's beautiful, and I think the idea that it was born on the internet from a Kickstarter, spread through the internet by Tumblr, YouTube, all this kind of stuff, it is in a very real sense a video game that exists because of the internet, it is like a modern video game, and it's fucking great, you know? And I really love it. It is one of my top six games of all time. Of all time. And it makes me sad to drop it at number six, but this is what I gotta do. If you wanna know why I love this game, you can go watch my recent video on it. Which I'm guessing you, a lot of you, already have done, but it's there. Okay, top five video games. At number five... At number five, it's going to be Capcom versus SNK2. Um, the second best fighting game that's ever existed. Uh, the best roster that's ever existed. Just fucking absolutely brilliant game. Incredible art style. I love the story of the fighting tournament that gets interrupted. Um, yeah, a for like my like personal development and the things I was into profoundly impactful on like getting into anime getting into fighting games getting into all these different characters and just loving them so much um who did i play in cvs2 i played saga i played kami um i played um oh the king of fighters guy i why can't i remember his name the king of fighters guy the blonde guy who does like the the whip attacks yeah, like, it's just an endlessly customizable game, and it's, it's fucking incredible. <sighs> okay. Top four. Guys, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be back in one second.
Okay. Number four. So number four is gonna be Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Um, I don't know how else to describe this game other than just the most meticulously perfect fighting game I've ever played. Street Fighter 3 is infinite. Street Fighter 3 is just, I could play it forever and never feel like I know everything about that game. I feel like every character is such a different, unique fighting style, except Ryu and Ken. Um, and, like, I have played it, been playing it for like 15 years, and I still feel like a beginner at it. And I love that. Like, I love the end, like, I love the endless depth that comes with that game, and a lot of it is just, it provides you with a defensive system that if you get good enough at, can get you out of literally every fucking, like, dangerous situation you could be in, if you have, like, the reaction time and just the fucking balls to do it. And I love it. Artistically, music-wise, it's tens across the board. I cannot fault Street Fighter 3. And that's less than I could say about the other games on this list. I think Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is the most perfect game on this list. I just like three other games slightly, slightly more. Okay. At number three, the number three game on my list. This is this is a uh, bury the light from the Devil May Cry Five soundtrack. Yes, it is an excellent song. <laughs> oh, it's it's three thirty AM and I'm so tired and this is so hard. The number three best game of all time is Silent Hill 2. <laughs> oh my god, I can feel that one on my insides. It's just so hard and I'm, we've been streaming for five hours, five and a half hours, and I'm so- and the chat is going fucking insane! <sighs> okay, look, Silent Hill 2, um, my favorite story in any video game, of just profoundly upsetting, sad narrative just about, like, how loss fucking destroys you, and how grief leaves you just obliterated, you know, and just lost in yourself. And it does it all in a way a film never could, a book never could, and like, you don't even fucking realize you're playing it. You don't know what's going on in that game until the very end, and the way it just changes everything is insane. 
you know, and it's goddamn, it is such a fucking beautiful game. And like one of the biggest regrets I have is not talking about that ending in the video, like not dropping a spoiler warning and just going into it full ham. Like in my original Silent Hill 2 video, which I made like years ago. And I think to me, like it's a game that deals with mental illness. It's a game that deals with just getting trapped in your own fucking reality and not being able to make your way out. And it's like, it's devastating and it's, it's beautiful. Like it is a game about pain. It is a game about life handing you things you cannot handle and I love it so much and I love the performances so much I love how it looks it's just it is an exceptionally beautiful game and it would be a hundred percent worthy of you know the game of the year and it's only for these two other slightly better games yeah That letter reading, exactly, like, that letter reading. Okay. So now the only question is what is the greatest game of all time? We have gone through a hundred games. We have we've gone through the Shadow Realm, we've gone through everything, and it's come down to just this. And so before we do, we're gonna count down every single game that's brought us to this point. Okay, I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a poll. We're gonna do a poll and we're gonna look at the results in a little bit. Saying I can't end the current poll, which is weird. Um. Yeah, hmm, looks like we won't be able to do a poll. That sucks. Okay, fuck it. You know what? We'll just do it on Twitter. Give me one second. Uh, guys, I'm going to drop a poll in my, in the announcement for this tweet. Okay, if you guys go to the my Twitter and it's the announcement of this stream, there is now a poll and it's one vote and Final Fantasy 7 is winning. In the meantime, we're going to count down everything. Okay. 
Starting in the dead zone, we have the Resident Evil 2 remake, Xenoblade Chronicles, Shovel Knight, Yakuza 7, Crash Bandicoot, Gaelic Games PS2, Mario Odyssey, Final Fantasy 15, and Shenmue 3. Those are the games that... Garbage. Just don't like them. Don't like them at all. <laughs> oh... I'm also going to be reading out donations before we take this. So if you have a final argument for one over the other, donate now and I guarantee you I will read it out and take it into account. <laughs> okay, people are saying they're still mad about Yakuza 7. So you know what, chat, I'm going to take Yakuza, I'm going to do something unprecedented and I'm going to take Yakuza 7 out of the dead zone. You have my word. Because what if there was a place below the dead zone? What if there was somewhere even worse than the dead zone? What if I left Yakuza 7 in the void of nothing? <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you all get for disagreeing with me. <laughs> the void of nothing. The worst place imaginable, and that's where we will leave it forever. Okay. So in the Shadow Realm, a place of honor, Psychonauts, Near Automata, Soul Reaver, Shenmue 1, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, World of Horror, Silent Hill, Shadow Memories, SSX Tricky, Dark Chronicle, Celeste, The King of Fighters 2000, Shadow of the Colossus, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, Harvest Moon, Lilat Wars, Celeste, River City Girls, Tekken Tag Tournament, Anodyne, GoldenEye, Day of the Tentacle, Metal Slug 3, uh, Thumper, Wario Lands, um, the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, great game, Hyrule Warriors, Fury, Arkham Asylum, Haunting Ground, Tenshu, Wrath of Heaven, Into the Breach, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Evo, Search for Eden, Silent Hill 3, Sunset Riders, Bust Move, WrestleMania 2000, Choo Choo Rocket, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi, Simon the Sorcerer, Mer, Master of the Demon Blade, No More Heroes 2, Delta Ruin, Shantae and the Pirates Curse, Little Nightmares, Tiny Toons Adventures, Super Double Dragon, Joe and Mac, South Park, Stick of Truth, Let It Die. Okay. Number 100, Gone Home, 99, Blood Sin, Curse of the Moon, 98, Detention, 97, God Hand, 96, Deadly Premonition, 95, FTL, 94, Zombies in My Neighbors, 93, Metroid Prime, 92, If Found, 91, Fallout New Vegas, 90, Hades, 89, Mystical Ninja 64, 88, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, 87, Command and Conquer Red Alert 2, 86, Full Throttle, 85, Guilty Gear Revelator, um, 84, Hollow Knight, 83, Monster Hunter World, 82, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, 81, 1999, 80, Fire Emblem Awakening, 79, The Allure, 78, Deadly Premonition, 77, Killer 7, 76, Cave Story, 75, Hotline Miami, 74, Portal 2, um, 73, Goro Mark of the Wolf, 72, Banjo Kazooie, 71, Hyperlight Drifter, 70, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, 69, it's, uh, Tony Hawk 3, 68, Asura's Wrath, 67, Bahamut Lagoon, 66, Persona 4 Golden, 65, Witch's House, 64, Spelunky 2, 63, Mega Man, 62, Dragon Quest 2, 61, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, 60, Danganronpa 2, 59, Doki Doki Literature Club, 58, Yume Nikki, 57, Disgaea, 56, Pokemon Silver, 55, Binding of Isaac, 54, Phoenix Wright, uh, 53, Gunstar Heroes, 52, Bloodborne, uh, 51, Earthbound, 50, Cuphead, 49, Beautiful Joe, 48, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, 47, Chrono Trigger, 46, Super Mario World 3D, 45, Super Metroid, 44, Donkey Kong Country 2, 43, No More Heroes, 42, Dead, uh, The Walking Dead Season 1, 41, Super Punch-Out, 40, Streets of Rage 2, 39, Shenmue 2, 38, Toho 8, Imperishable Night, 37, Nier, 36, WWE No Mercy, 35, Guitar Man, 34, Resident Evil 4, 33, Half-Life, 32, Secret of Mana, 31, Super Smash Bros. Switch, 30, Resident Evil Remake, 35, Devil May Cry 5, 28, Bayonetta 2, 27, Street Fighter Alpha 3, 26, Tekken 5, 25, Legend Mystical Ninja, 24, Wind Waker, 23, Final Fantasy 6, 22, Dead Rising, 21, Mass Effect 2, 
20 Majora's Mask, 19 Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, 18 Pokemon Blue, 17 Super Mario World, 16 Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution, 15 Devotion, 14 Red Dead Redemption 2, 13 Least of the Painful, 12 Super Mario 64, 11 Link to the Past, 10 Yakuza 0, 9 Metal Gear Solid 2, 8 Ocarina of Time, 7 Dark Souls, 6 Undertale, 5 Capcom vs SNK 2, 4 Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, 3 Silent Hill 2, number 2, that's all to be decided. <laughs> Would I accept an, an impassioned argument for Shadow the Hedgehog? No. No, I would not. Okay, gonna read out a few final Tiltify donations before we get going here. Um, guys, we are just about to pass three grand. We are two dollars away from three grand. Holy shit. Um, okay. Okay, um... Dan, $20. Red Comet, $10. Uh, Faulty Stack de Mac, $100. Um, Zapkin, $5. Felt I couldn't watch without donating. Thanks for doing this, man. It's been a fun stream. Um, Faulty Stack de, de Mac, $25. Uh, from Funky Monk on the Let's Fight a Boss Discord. Thank you, Funky Monk. Ruben Mocha, $10. Love your stuff, mate. Keep up the good work. QR Guy, loving the list, keep up the great work. As someone who's dealt with uh, suicidal tendencies in my youth, knowing that there are resources and others going through the same thing is great. Sending you love and chat. Um, AZ188, um, what do you think about the Land of the Lustrous? Great show, never read the manga, but I'd like to. Cabbage, $10. Um, to match my buddy, Red Comet. Anonymous, $20. Sunset Law, uh, $10. Yakuza 7 is my favorite game of 2020 and one of the best RPGs of all time. The ending moved me to tears, so please put it out of the dead zone. Well, you got your wish, dude. Um, thank you for the stream. Anonymous, $70. Keep up the good work. PS was playing Hades for the whole stream, but yeah, it's definitely nowhere near the likes of Dark Souls. Um, Thok, $6.66. Thank you for repping Lisa. The game is the best. Uh, Mr. Potshot, $7. Final Fantasy VII, number one, baby. Butoski, but uh, $33.33. Tommy, $20. You can sleep now, my sweet nameless prince. Kozanagi, um... Final Fantasy VII is probably the most important game. I only finished last year for the first time, but I can tell how special it is. I feel Mother 3 and pretty every other JRPG after it wouldn't exist, but it did spawn Final Fantasy VII or so Mother 3 for number one. Um, Rolander, oh, my voice, I'm, I'm actually like losing my voice at this point. Um, Rolander, $5, the biggest heal move of all time would be anger most people. More people love Final Fantasy VII than Mother 3 than you never make a video on Mother 3, never explain yourself, let the fans suffer, you can do it John, become what you've always dreamed of being, the heel you were born to be, love, thank you dude. Um, Complex Champion, that's such a good name. Um, some, five dollars, uh, fuck of a stream, I have no idea. Um, here's hoping that Bloodborne 2 will be in your top 3, yeah I would love that. Redivision five dollars, okay thanks, here's five dollars for Mother 3. Um, Anonymous, $20, you did go to CVS too. Guys, we are at $3,028, and that is incredible. For a stream that's been like only going for a couple of hours, I never thought we would hit that. That is incredible. Okay, let me pause the music here. Let's let the tension build. But before we do, look, video game lists are stupid. Ranking lists is stupid whole purpose of this stream was basically just raise some money for a good cause and I'm really super proud of everyone that we did that. I know I've made a lot of decisions to piss people off. I'm okay with that but ultimately I'm glad people enjoyed the stream and I'm glad you know it provided a bit of levity for someone and I'm really glad that I decided that to do it for like you know um, the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention in particular. I was talking about this earlier in the stream but 2020 fucking was a shit year was a shit year for everyone. I feel like I was one of the people least affected by it. 
but it still sucked for me and I can't imagine how it was for other people and um you know as I said earlier part of why I wanted to do this stream is kind of like destigmatize in whatever little way I can the talk around kind of suicide and mental health and that kind of stuff because we still don't talk about that shit enough like we just don't and we've gotten a lot of messages from people tonight talking about how you know they've been through their own shit and like it always helps to know that other people have and like no one's alone in this like there is, other people do care it's just not always obvious and like if you are struggling there are resources out there and no one should ever have to deal with that shit alone ever and you know if you are it's not something you should have to take on board by yourself like serious misery depression anxiety that is not stuff that you should have to tolerate in your own life and if you are like all i can say is just like you know go get help like there's absolutely a time when i was like depressed like so far beyond anything i'd ever dealt with and i did go and i like you know i got therapy and i got help with it and that was one of the best decisions i ever made you know and when i think about the amount of time i spent convincing myself it wasn't a good idea and it wasn't for me in hindsight that was so dumb and i felt like it would have been a lot healthier for me to get it quicker but i didn't um and so if you know people take anything away from this is like you know don't be too proud like everyone needs help with shit and if you are suffering you don't need to be like and you don't deserve that and don't do that to yourself i felt like that was worth saying in this really ridiculous stream about ranking which video games are better than other video games and um i've had a blast with this stream i'm exhausted now but this has been really fucking cool and just you know really appreciate everyone who turned up but we have one final decision to make here. I'm going to check the Twitter poll. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so we have... Out of 926 votes, 55% for Mother 3, Final 45% for Final Fantasy 7. The chat is leaning Mother 3. Okay. I think I've made a decision. The number one best game of all time, according to me, is Raid Shadow Legends. Do you want an epic game that lets you that lets you gather all the loot you can? Are you eager to play with friends and uh, fight this array of amazing characters? Then Raid Shadow Legends is the game for you. Available now on all free devices. Well, guys, that's gonna do it. Um, thanks everyone for joining my stream. Uh, I had a fun time. It's been it's been good. It's I think there was a lot of difficult decisions there, um, but ultimately we did it. And um, yeah, I had I had a I had a good time. Um, so I think you know that's gonna do it for the stream. And um, yeah, have a good night, guys.
Mother 3 is the number two game on this list. I love Mother 3. Mother 3 is a just fucking profoundly hilarious, sad, amazing game about what losing a family member can do to you. And I don't have it much in me to convey why I think that game is so good, but I think um, it just shows, like, through this, like, really hilarious, quirky, beautiful world, it just shows you the dissolution of this family, and it's the most heartbreaking fucking thing. Um, There's another game on this list that made me fucking ball, and I love it. And I will never not love it for that. It breaks like the fourth wall in some really incredible ways. And I think it's just a masterpiece, complete masterpiece. And there's only one other game I would put slightly above it. And that is Final Fantasy VII. If you want to know why this is my favorite game of all time, you can go watch my fucking 50 minute video for it where I go into everything. But I think what I really love about Final Fantasy VII is through everything, it is a game that kind of just looks at you and just says you are enough. And I think that's something that we all need to hear every now and then. And I don't feel a need to justify it any more than that. Um, and guys, that's going to do it for this stream. Uh, I really hope you all had a good time. I did. I'm like exhausted but it was like this was so much fun and i had a really really good time and we've been at this for six hours uh it's currently nearly 4 a.m in ireland and i am going to go to bed but this was a blast i'm gonna read out the final few donations real quick and then i'm gonna head um okay um, anonymous twenty dollars. You did go with CVS two. Uh, Livlin. Um, I love your voice, your face, your videos. Only your weird shit taste in media is keeping me away from being a simp. Um, Adeng's twenty dollars. This stream ended up being some of the greatest entertainment during a uh, boring shit at work. I just want to show my appreciation. Thanks for everything you do, John. No problem. Okay, guys, <coughs> I'm gonna call it there. You can donate more, but I won't be able to read them because my voice is going. I love you all.